Bruins have landed. Their destiny derailed by two straight setbacks. So today, Glory will take a backseat to survival as they brace for this crucial divisional showdown. The scars of battle have taken their toll in Philadelphia, where the shorthanded Eagles must play through the pain and regain the winning touch. the Eagles live at Veterans Stadium which of course is sold out for the 110th renewal of this rivalry that has become more intense as the years pass. Good afternoon I'm Pat Summerall here with John Madden and John the Giants are 4-0 they could be 5-0 if they win today they would be 4-0 within their division they obviously realize the importance of this contest now how do they approach it? Well, you know, it's funny, when we were talking to Bill Parcells, I got the feeling that he was more concerned with the fact that they lost to the Eagles twice last year than he was with the fact that they're 4-0. Oh. And he says that last year, he doesn't think they were tough enough, that they were aggressive enough against them. He said, this year we want to be more aggressive. And in fact, he said on offense, we want to go for their throat. And I think what they have to do is get Reggie White blocked to do that. And on defense, he said, we've got so concerned about containing Randall Cunningham, having a spy, that we forgot to rush him. And we want to go back to playing aggressive defense against Cunningham and going after him. You know, just a couple of weeks ago, people were talk talking about the Philadelphia Eagles being in the Super Bowl. Now, all of a sudden, they're two and two. One of the things that Buddy Ryan said they had to accomplish was be able to run the ball better than in past years. Do you think they can do that today? I don't think so. I think they'll probably try again, but they are a passing team, and their, uh, their offense is Randall Cunningham. That's what it's all about. And Buddy Ryan says, we have to do two things. He said, when we're on offense, you know, Buddy doesn't call guys by name. He says, we have to block number 56. Then we can pass, maybe we can run. Then on defense, we have to stop 89. He said, that guy's been killing us. 89, he's talking about Mark Bavaro. In fact, he said to Bavaro, he said, they put him in the Pro Bowl the last two years, and he said, if we don't watch out, we're going to put this guy in the Hall of Fame. Looking down at Veterans Stadium, which is sold out as it usually is for the contest between the Giants and the Eagles. One of the oldest and one of the most intense meetings of two teams that takes place in the entire NFL. Allegre will kick off Mark Higgs and Heath Sherman back deep for the Eagles. A knuckler that's going to be handled by Sherman almost. And finally, and down he goes inside the 10. This is one of the areas where the Giants have really improved. The special teams. Red Randall Cunningham, who threw 62 times last week against the Bears. He'll face, or he'll have this offensive front in front of him. Darwin, Shad, Alexander, Solt, Ron Heller, and Jimmy Giles starting in place of Keith Jackson at tight end. Byers, Tony, the backs, Quick, and Carter, the wide receivers. And when they go with two more, it'll be Johnson and Garrity. And we'll probably see a lot more of Garrity. Randall Cunningham. One of the most dangerous, dangerous individuals in pro football. Pitches back to Byers, right side, outside the 10 to about the 15, stopped by Johnny Cooks. Up front for the Giants, Washington, Eric Howard, and Leonard Marshall. The linebackers, Banks and Taylor on the outside, Reasons and Cooks on the inside. In the secondary. Young and improving. Collins, Williams on the corners. Kennard and Guyton. And watch him. Sheldon White and Renee Thompson are the nickelbacks. Chris Carter wide to the left. It's Myers again. First down. Eric Howard tripped him up. Well, that was one of the things the Eagles said they wanted to do yesterday, Pat, is run. 
And then specifically, they thought the best place to run was to their right side behind Ron Salt, number 65, who had been an all-pro guard, and Ron Heller. They thought they're their best two blockers, and plus they get the best matchup against the Giants here. Quick is wide left this time, and Carter is wide right. Hang in to Tony. Not much there. Cooks again with an assist from Leonard Marshall, a gain of only one. Maybe they should have stayed with what they started with. They had two runs to the right. They had good success there. That's what they want to do. Then they go to the left, and they find a point. Watch this. They're going to run a little draw here to the left. He gets into the line. That's perfect defense there. There's Leonard Marshall waiting right for him. Taylor comes in there. Johnny Cooks is in there. No room in that hole. Second and nine. Cunningham to throw it. Giles, who ducks about a foot short of the first down, it looks like. Cooks and Taylor on the stop. Jimmy Giles, the longtime star for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, with the Eagles last year, was released, and then they brought him back. Jimmy Giles says, I've been in a lot of big games. He's a 13-year veteran, and the bad news for the Eagles was that they lost Keith Jackson, of course. The good news is that they have Jimmy Giles. And I'll tell you, Randall Cunningham feels very, very comfortable with Jimmy Giles. So does that guy, Buddy Ryan. And it's a first down by Giles from Cunningham. Randall Cunningham said to us yesterday, we were talking to him about Jimmy Giles, and he said he thinks he's 27. Yes, he wanted to know what that secret is where you just stay that one age all the time. And you could bottle that and sell it. First and 10 Eagles at their own 31. Putting drive, it's fired left side. Just a couple reasons on the stop with Eric Howard. Yeah, if you look on first down play selection, the Giants are 71% run, 29% pass. That's the most in the league. The Eagles, 42% and 58%. That's the least, you know, of the rush on first down. So, so of course, they're trying to change that. That's so far, they've reversed that trend. Second and eight. Some room, a flag on the play. Stop, tripped up by Collins. But a penalty marker down. Nine yard pickup by Byers. That would have been enough for another first down, but it's going to be against the Eagles. Tom Dooley is the referee. And it's probably against the tight end. When that comes flying out of there, that's the guy who watches the tight end. You see Jimmy Giles in there. 83 offense, second down. Yep, it is. And that was where they were running too. They were they were running into that right side. Again, every time they've run to the right side, Pat, they've had success. They've made yardage there. They run in the middle or to the left. They, I don't think they've gained an inch. Well, that long gain to the left is two yards. So far, the success has been, as you point out, to this side. Myers, who is an excellent pass receiver, is foot wide right. Green pass coming to Tony. Brought down by Myron Guyton. Two-yard gain, that's all. You can dress 45, you can keep 47 on the roster. Two you have to put down an hour and 15 minutes before game time. Those are the two today. Of course, I talked to Keith Jackson yesterday, and yeah, he was saying he was in the hospital all week in Chicago with that back spasm, got back late Thursday, and he said that he thinks that next week he'll be able to play, that it's getting better and better. That was him there in the sideline in that overcoat. He said he expects to be back next week. They almost left him at Soldier Field. Here comes Cunningham, and he's got some room. Not enough. Another flag on the play, and the ball's on the ground. And out of bounds. Taylor made the hit on Cunningham, and here comes John Telschick and the Eagle punting unit. He hasn't kicked all week, nor did he kick in warm-ups. You know, 
the one one of the things that Lawrence Taylor does does well. I mean, does everything well. He rushes well. He runs well. He tackles well. He hits well. But watch this. Come from behind as he tackles. Get that hand in there and strip the ball. One of the best in the league. This is Telchik, and for a guy who didn't warm up, that's a heck of a kick. Fielded by Megan back at the 25. And the Giants figure they've got to get the ball in his hands a little more often as he was brought down by William Frizzell. 48-yard punt by Telchik. I was feeling pretty good when I saw my boy Joe in that new Oldsmobile. I thought Joe had finally met to it some. But that new Petlas Clay doesn't look like any Oldsmobile that I ever had. It's got something called a high output spot for engine. The next thing you know, Joe will be bringing home girls. This is not your father's Oldsmobile. Now get up to a $1,600 cash bonus on a 1990 Cutlass Calais. See your Olds dealer today. I was always the quarterback's favorite target. I never dropped the ball because I had hands like glue. And even after football, I stick with my favorite beer, Miller Lite. I don't want some watered-down version of a regular beer. I want the less filling beer that tastes great. White. And again. Thanks, Danny. Oh. Thank you, Dwight. Nice. There's no catch when it's Miller Light. Less Billy tastes great. Philadelphia. On the left is Spectrum, Phil Sims. And his offensive line in front of him, Elliott starting again now. Roberts, Oates, Eric Moore in place of Johnson at right guard. Doug Riesenberg and Mark Bavaro up front. Anderson and Carthon, the running backs, Odessa Turner and Lionel Manuel start at wide receiver. When they go to their fourth receiver package, it's Ingram and Baker. Split wide to the left this time, and that's manual in motion. Sims to throw it on first down. Outside to Otis Anderson. To outside the 40, a pickup of five, stopped by Seth Joyner. And the Eagle defense, they play four up front. The incomparable Reggie White, Mike Pitts, Jerome Brown, and Clyde Simmons. Joyner, Evans, and Harris, the linebackers. Zell Jenkins and Eric Allen, the young quarter cornerbacks. Bavaro is the move man this time. This is Anderson left side. Not much doing. He has bounced backwards by Clyde Simmons' first pickup of two. It'll bring up the third down. Well, I think when Bill Parcells was telling us last night that we're going to go for the throat. I think that this is pretty good position to go for the throw. I think one guy he wants to go with today is what you, you mentioned earlier, David Meggett. He's a rookie that he really likes. He's a running back, but he's also a very good receiver. They're going to line him up in the backfield, and they're also going to line him up split out. And they go with four wide receivers and Meggett back there by Sims, a dangerous package. When you can have four wide receivers and then you have David Meggett in there, that gives you five guys right now. So you don't have that many defenders to get a good guy on everyone. In fact, in this case, the Eagles don't have anyone on Dave Meggett. By the time the linebacker gets there, he's already caught the ball. That was Seth Joyner who took the uh, flag out. First down, Giants at the Eagles, 35. Otis Anderson, right side for a gain of two. Stopped by Reggie White. 
Reggie White was telling me yesterday that he just didn't think that they had the any fire or intensity last week in Chicago. And he said he doesn't know why it didn't happen, but he said, we got to get it back. And yesterday, he thought they would really have it today, or whatever that means. I don't know how you know yesterday what you're going to have today. I think in Reggie White's case, I think he just carries a full tank around all the time. I think every day in his case. He's in motion. Here's Sims. Open his manual. And another giant first down, a pickup of 12. Dizel Jenkins brought him down. It looked like Phil Sims hit his hand on something, Pat. That's the thing you always worry about a quarterback following through is hitting the hand on the helmet of the rusher. And it looks like Phil Sims hurt his right hand. Well, you know, he's done that before. Broke his hand, in fact, in the same, same fashion. Let's see right there, the right hand, when he follows through, see if it hit anything. Anderson, left side. Tripped up by Clyde Simmons. A gain of five, nevertheless. But I'll tell you, I, you know, that was the thing I always worried about the quarterbacks is not so much the sacks. You worried about that blind side. You didn't let him like him to get hit for, well, you didn't like him to get hit any time, but having him throw, step up and follow through and get that hand or finger caught in the defender. Second and five. It started with three tight ends. They utilized Bavaro, who slipped down. And Byron Evans made sure he stayed there. There's a guy who's had some big games against the Eagles in his career. And that's a guy that Buddy Ryan is most worried about. And it's not only Mark Bavaro. If you look, this is what he's done in the last four games. And you can see why Buddy is worried. Seven, six, nine, five passes, three games over 100 yards. But I think tight ends in general give Buddy Ryan's defense a tough time. Well, they usually rush eight and expose the cornerbacks and let the linebackers cover the tight end. Here's Sims out of the spread, third down. Well, he's going to take off and get the first down. And more. Sims hit it for the end zone. It's down to two. Stopped by Mike Pitts. A 14-yard scramble. Hey, who made a heck of a block? A 66 right there, William Roberts. He was really aware on that, on that thing because you start off and you look at Roberts, he's a left guard. You block, 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 look around. Now watch him. You see your quarterback's running. Watch 66 Roberts. He gets right in front there. Boom, he gets a block there, and that gives Sims a little more protection. Roberts' block was on Frizzell, and he just buried him. A big old guard always likes to find a little old defensive back hanging around there. Find there. somebody with a 30 on it. Oh, you love it. Do get it back. Jerome Brown batted it out of Sims' hand. And Maggot made the recovery. Tell you, that is real something. Watch 99 there. He's going to come through. Phil Sims goes to reverse pivot. Now he's going back. Jerome Brown gets penetration, knocks it right out of Sims' hand. recovery. I said Megat. I saw the zero. Harthon and Anderson, the two runners behind Sims, who's going to throw it. A receiver trip, no flag. And situations like this, although this is a passing situation, sometimes the Eagles don't even use a defensive back. Well, down on the goal lane, they don't. But here again, he's trying to go to Mark Bavaro. Mark Bavaro gets hit, gets grabbed, gets held, gets tripped right there by the middle linebacker, Byron Evans. And Bavaro was the guy Sims was looking at all the way. That was one the officials didn't see. Third and eight on the eighth. Offensive coordinator, Ron Earhart. Manuel split wide right. Odessa Turner to the left. Moat was the man in motion. The Eagles come on a blitz. Sims gets rid of it over the head of Turner. Incomplete. Eric Allen was 
the Eagle defender. And here comes Allegre. Jeff Hostetler will be the holder who can also throw it. I think Parcells was thinking about being more aggressive, going for the throat. I think he wanted to take that first one and mar march it down and get that score in there. But anytime you miss a couple like that, you're going to get three, but you're not as excited about it. Allegre, from 25 yards out, is good. Flag on the play. Hold in a second. Allegra's having trouble with that right leg. <laughs> he pulled a groin muscle in it last week, and he, he got up limping a little slowly there. Nevertheless, he hits, and it's 3-0. I'm tired of us centers getting no recognition. I played 13 seasons in front of millions of fans, made All-Pro twice, and started in three Super Bowls. Yet no one knows who I am. Hey, even if I'm not well-known, at least my beer is. Miller Lite. An all-pro center doesn't want some watered-down version of a regular beer. I want the less filling beer that tastes great. Oh, 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 let me get that. Hey, aren't you Randy Cross? It's well known. When it's Miller Lite, less filling tastes great. Trofeo, trofeo. It's a new generation and you want a new old. Sequential port, fuel injection, anti-lock brakes. It is come and we want a new old. Visual information center handles great. This old mobile is not our father's. New generation for the sons and daughters. Trofeo. This is the new generation of old mobile. Because there's a man in Chicago planning his retirement this year. Because there's a family in Boston who hopes to send their kids to college someday. Because there's a doctor in New York looking forward to the day she'll open her own clinic. Because every investor is different, with dreams all their own. Dean Witter measures success one investor at a time. Dean Witter, a member of the Sears Financial Network. The story of the Giants scoring drive, 12 plays. They went 56 yards, kept the ball 6 minutes, 26 seconds. This was the key that set up Allegre's 25-yard field goal to put them ahead 3-0. Sims scramble behind the block of William Roberts. And a good one. He got to the 2. The next play, they fumbled and then couldn't capitalize on the first and goal situation. Settled for the 25-yard field goal by Allegre. You know, it happens when you get down to the two and you don't score, even though you like to get those three points, that is a plus for the defense. When you get down there to two and they can hold you to three, they're very happy about that. Allegre's kick is fielded by David Little. One of the up men. Second time he's kicked the spiral on the kickoff. Lewis Tillman down on the special teams, a three-yard return. Have you said if there's one big area that the Giants improved, I think we just saw it for the second time there, their special teams. Where they have so much more speed on their coverage teams, it's amazing. I think they think they have more weapons on offense, but that's the area that you point out that they have drastically improved. I talked to their punter, Sean Landetta, and he said he was so happy with that group, all he has to do is get something high up in the air, and he'll know they'll lead the league in that punt. Here's Byers, stumbling over the right side and still going ahead. Finally stopped by Terry Kennard, a pickup of 10. Right now for an NFL update, here's Brent Musburger in New York. Pat, uh, let me show you how the Buccaneers got ahead of the uh, Chicago Bears. A pass by Vinny Testaverde. Fortunately, he had a receiver five yards deep of the intended receiver, and Mark Carrier, in effect, intercepts in the end zone. 7-0 Bucks and back to Pat. Brent Myron Guyton, who has been outstanding, is the injured giant. See what happens. Well, you're going to see him right there, number 29. It looked like, John, that Carl Banks hit him with his helmet in the side of his own helmet. In any case, he is still down. Byron Guyton injured.
You know, baseball cards are real popular these days. For one Ron say, I can get a whole case of my favorite beer, Miller Lite. I don't want some watered-down minor league version of a regular beer. I want the less filling beer that tastes great. Hey, Ace! Give me two cases, you can have this baby. Dream on. One case. Nope. A six-pack. Mm-mm. A half a can? The big league light beer, Miller Lite, where less filling tastes great. Okay, I'll give you two cases, and you don't have to take the card. But that's my final offer. Must have a couple of mine already. All right. Whoa. shape our future, we invite you to learn the technology of tomorrow while you serve your country in the Navy of today. Trofeo! Trofeo! It's a new generation and we want a new world. Sequential port, fuel injection, anti-lock brakes. This Oldsmobile is not our father's new generation for the sons and daughters. Trofeo! This is the new generation of Oldsmobile. When it's the big game, will the major have to call timeout? Polly! When he gets interference from the majorettes? Watching this game is very important to Matt. It makes him happy. You idiot! Major Dad, Monday. Over on the sideline. The giant doctor looking at Myron Guyton. Here's what happened, John. Yeah, here's Myron Guyton here. And if you look at what happens, he's going to come up. And you see him coming up here. Now watch, he goes to Carl Banks right there. See 58 coming across. They hit helmets right there. Second and about a foot for the Eagles. And they didn't get back to the line of scrimmage. Eric Howard stopped Keith Byers behind the line of scrimmage. Well, again, that's the area where they think they have the best chance of running. Running in there behind Ron Heller at John Washington. Of course, Eric Howard got in on that one, but they would like to run at John Washington and Carl Banks. And, of course, that gets you away from Leonard Marshall and, more importantly, Lawrence Taylor. Third and one. Word on Guyton as he should be back. Here's Cunningham. Up the middle, intended for Byers, deflected by Johnny Cooks, who just got a hand up at the last second. Byers was open. I tell you, if Johnny Cooks doesn't get that hand up, that's a big play to Byers. Because Byers, when Johnny Cooks got his hand up, we're going to see Byers is about five yards behind Cooks. Watch Cooks will come up there and jump. And look, if he doesn't get it, there's Byers back there waiting for the ball all by himself. Here's John Telschick. His first punt, 48 yards. He's got a bad right knee. He says, I can run, but it hurts when I kick it. This is a knuckler. Megan, fair catch at the 40. And so the Giants will take over a 33-yard punt by Telsic. And still, the Giants have not been scored on in the first quarter this year. Too many people think a spark plug's a spark plug. Well, all spark plugs aren't alike. These AC Copper Core plugs match my car's specs like rounds in a chamber, firing up to 30 times a second for up to 30,000 miles of high revving firepower. Precision AC Delco parts. They don't just fit, they match. Keep your car running the way it was made to run. Now get up to $8.80 back on AC filters and plugs. See your retailer for details. I've made up my mind. I'm gonna do it. Why shouldn't I? I'm the one who has to look at myself in the mirror every morning. So before I lose another hair, I'm going to the doctor. I know doctors have treatment programs that are proven to work. More guys are trying them every day. I'm not bad now, but I wouldn't mind looking better. Your doctor can really do something about hair loss. So see your doctor or call this toll-free number. A real good love. Your marriage will never end. Oh.
always last. Your children will never grow old. The Western will never die. Capture it on an eight-hour T-160, and we guarantee you a lifetime of replays and re-records. For life, for sure, forever. BASF, tape that lasts forever. Here's John Telschick, the Eagle punter. His first effort was a dandy. His, well, this was his first effort. And this was not a dandy. This is in pregame. Well, you know, he really didn't even kick in the pregame. In fact, he didn't kick all week because of that knee. He said he was going to save it for the game. This was the first <laughs> one that he tried in a week, and that one didn't look too good. Not so graceful. Flag on the play as Sims was back to throw. He is sacked by the Eagles. Clyde Simmons. Reggie White and Mike Pitts all there, but a penalty marker down. Hey, and it's against the Giants. That's what a quarterback calls an avalanche. Hands, number 76 offense. Tony's the climb. Tuck it down. That's against Jumbo Elliott, the left tackle. And you're going to see the hand come right up now to the head of Clyde Simmons here. You see? Boom, right there. They call him for that, that left hand to the head. But if you're the quarterback and you see three white jerseys on you, that's what the quarterbacks call an avalanche. That was a line of me. That was an avalanche came back on me that time. Second down, they decline the penalty. Take the sack, and Sims is going to throw again. Sarah intended for Howard Cross, and it took off. He's 6'6" but it was five feet beyond his reach. You notice there's nothing that will fire up a defense and nothing will fire up a crowd like a sack. I mean, this Eagle team came out, looked a little lethargic. In fact, I thought they looked lethargic all Monday night. Looked a little lethargic here. Boom, they get that sack. Now it looks like this whole joint comes to life. When they couldn't get it in and had to settle for the field goal earlier, and now that sack, and now you can feel, as you say, the crowd and the team is really hopped up. After Sims again, an incomplete intended for Stephen Baker, and Sims was hit by Reggie White just as he let it go. Reggie White came right up the middle over Bart Oates. But they, that's the thing they got to get. Here's Reggie White here. He's going to come, boom, right up the middle. And I'll tell you, that is what they have to do. If they're going to protect Sims, they got to get him blocked. You see White? Right up the middle, he splits that thing. Now watch here, he got the full step. Now watch what he does to Phil Sims. Doink! Landetta back to punt. Henry Williams, Gizmo. Deep for the Eagles. Signal and fair catch makes it. The Eagles take over at their own 34 as the defense comes to life. This is a fired up Eagle defense now and a fired up crowd. Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia packed. As you look down from the Goodyear Blimp America, based in Houston, pilot Mark Kynett controls today. The Giants lead 3-0 on a 25-yard field goal by Allegre. Cutting it. Look out for Lawrence Taylor. He never saw it coming from that backside where he can be just lethal. Hey, watch Lawrence Taylor here. He, he rushes with great speed right here. He's just going to come around that backside of Cunningham. He goes right around Matt Darwin right there. Keeps working, working, working. And again, he's going for Cunningham. If Cunningham didn't step up and throw, he was going to lose the ball. He didn't see him, but I think he felt him. He felt him, and he knew that that was coming, and he had to step up. Second and 10 Eagles. They're only four. And hand off to Tony. Nothing there. No game. There's Reggie White. That minister of defense. That uh, last hit he had on Phil Sims, that was the first time he lined up over the center. And I would think we're going to see a lot 
of him over the center today. Why do they do that? Well, they do it to get a man-on-man -man situation because they put him over the center, cover both guards. Now they have to have man somewhere in their pass protection. Spread is Cunningham. Away from Taylor, but not all the way away from Taylor. He is down. He's like a man on a mission when he plays against Randall Cunningham. The defense is taking over. Now look, they have two defensive linemen here. Then they use Taylor here and Banks here. So that gives them the four rush men. Now, that's what they play in passing situations now. Two defensive linemen in the middle, and Taylor and Banks as a defensive end. And this is what it gives them. When he starts to scramble, they have speed and containment. Helsey back to kick. Megan will have a chance to operate with this one. He gets into Eagle territory out of bounds by Reichenbach at the 44. Taylor was double teamed when he got that last sack on Cunningham. I think most of the time, Taylor is going to be double teamed. Look at this point. If you're a quarterback like that, we'd all want to sack something like that. But you could look at him. In the last seven games against Philly, he has 37 tackles and 14 and a half sacks. So you wonder why does Buddy Ryan say we have to block 56? because he's been there before. He is one of those guys you always say, in fact, Cunningham said yesterday, when I get up or start up the line of scrimmage, I want to know where he is. Sims to Anderson. Maybe a yard. Jerome Brown made the stop. That's the end of the first quarter with the score. The Giants three, the Eagles nothing. I guess Jennifer and I were like any young couple, excited at knowing that we'd soon have our first child. I'm Terry Hogue of the NFL's Philadelphia Eagles, and this is my wife, Jennifer. I was fortunate enough to be there in the delivery room as Christopher was being born. And in that moment of joy and love, I suddenly realized that our world had been shattered. The expressions on our doctor's faces told us something was wrong. We learned our son would survive, but he only had one kidney, and his lower left side below his waist had not developed. But we also came to the realization that there are parents who must face the same challenges we did without the resources to give their children. But the United Way agencies here in Philadelphia are helping children like Christopher. And now I'd like for you to meet our son, Christopher. The surgeries he's had help correct his right leg. And you're giving children just like Christopher the same chance at life when you give to the United Way. United Way, oh. it brings out the best in all of us. This message furnished by the National Football League. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by the new generation of Oldsmobile. Step into the future now at your Oldsmobile dealer. Dean Witter. Dean Witter measures success one investor at a time. And by Miller Lite, official sponsor of the NFL Player of the Year Award. Miller Lite brings you the NFL's best. Summerall, John Madden at Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia. The Giants and the Eagles. Giants 4-0, 3-0 within the division. And they could build something that would be hard to catch if they could win today. The Eagles in a situation where they must win. Although it's only week five. Second down, Giants. Cross is the move fan in the backfield and Sim outside of Megan. Giants got it back. Mark Ingram right there. That's what the Giants were trying to do, Pat. 
is sneak Maggot into the backfield. See 30 here, not on a passing down, but on a regular down. This is second down. Get him where the linebacker has to cover man to man. They get Al Harris on a man to man, and they figure that Maggot can beat anyone. Of course, they don't figure at the end he's going to fumble it. But that's one of the plans that the Giants have today. Get him in the backfield on non-passing down. Sims back to Anderson. Hit by Byron Evans. A pickup of three. We're talking about Al Harris. Well, there's Evans. Harris, one of the other linebackers, has lost, what do he say, like 40 pounds? He said a year ago when they played, when he played for Chicago and they played in the playoff game back there, that fog ball, he weighed 275 pounds. And Buddy Ryan, then he was a plan B player, Buddy Ryan said, can you lose 20 pounds? He said, heck yes, so he's lost 30, and he's playing linebacker now at 245. Ingram, the man in motion, the blitz on Sims, and he just had to unload. Fortunate that he did and had some green patches to go to. Hey, this is the second time. This is really an avalanche here against Sims. Watch the whole thing came in. Here comes the linebacker from the outside, Seth Joyner. He's not blocked at all. And just as he's hit by Joyner, he gets the pressure up the middle. Joyner's coming from Sims's right. Byron Evans up the middle. There's Jerome Brown in there. I'll tell you, when they go after Sims, they're bringing a whole bunch of white jerseys. Third and seven. Sims from the spread. Looked it over. Didn't like what he saw. Call a timeout. Three-nothing Giants with 13-31 left to play in the first half. With Ford Tempo, you can enjoy available features like automatic transaxle, air conditioning, power mirrors, and speed control, plus one very special luxury. You made reservations, right? The luxury of knowing Ford Tempo offers all these features for a very attractive price. Thanks. Keep the change. <laughs> Proving once again, you don't have to be well to do to do it well. See your dealer now for low financing or special savings on 1990 Ford Tempo. Attention football fans, get a free NFL warm-up jacket when you buy 10 rolls of pink insulation R19 or higher from, you know who, but hurry, offer ends October 15th. We help more Americans go to college, and we issue more MasterCard and Visa cards than any other company. We also serve millions of customers in every major marketplace worldwide. We're Citicorp and Citibank, America's largest financial services company. Whatever financial success you hope to achieve, whether it's business or personal, we can help you do it, and do it better than anyone else. Citicorp, because Americans want to succeed, not just survive. This NFL team summary is sponsored by Citicorp, because Americans want to succeed, not just survive. The Giants lead it. 3-0 on a 25-yard field goal by Allegre, his 12th straight game with a field goal for the Giants. The two defensive stars, Taylor and White, have one sack each. If you look at the Eagles, they have no yards passing, however. If you take the sack, Cunningham has completed two, and Sims took some sack, too. I think that we've seen quite a defensive battle here in this first half so far, Pat, that both of these defenses are going after the quarterback. They're both coming aggressive on the pass rush. Watch the blitz up the middle, the blitz from the outside, the high-low. This is going to be a long day for quarterback. Third and seven. Sims gets it outside to Turner, who is wide open. And looked up the field before the ball arrived. Giants have had too many opportunities that they haven't capitalized on so far in this first half. And boy, that comes back to haunt you. They were down on the two-yard line and didn't get a touchdown. They had that guy open on third down inside the 20, and he drops it. You can't miss those opportunities. Allegre will try from 39 yards away. Now we'll see if he has a bad leg or not. Big field goal. Hostetler. 
outside to a wide open Carl Banks, and he's a touchdown maker. That, that is what you call going for the throat. The Giants call it Apache. Everyone wants the Apache call. It takes the coach to have a lot of guts to make it, though. Watch it here. He's going to fake it. Carl Banks goes out to the right. Hostetler rolls to his left. Allegri stands there and does nothing. Carl Banks is wide open with a blocker, Zeke Moat, that he doesn't even need. He had them both wide open. The extra point by Allegri is good. And it is 10-0 Giants. Hey, I think the Giants needed this. I think they needed a big play here. When you're playing your Eagles in your division on the road, you got to make things happen. You drop one on third down, you come right back with a gutsy, gutsy, gutsy call. His second NFL touchdown, the other came against Atlanta last year on an interception. Isn't that something on one play, a wide receiver, Odessa turn on third down, drops it? So you throw it to your linebacker on fourth down. And look, he got gloves and pads and, you know, probably some sweat, some dirt. And he catches the thing. He even got a kiss. <laughs> right on the head. Tell you, they could make tackles. They could make sacks. They could do things. But when they catch a pass and score a touchdown, that's a highlight of their football life. Hostetler, he's over there. They, man, he's a quarterback. They love throwing those touchdowns. The only guy that didn't do anything on that play was Allegra. He made some <laughs> kind of stupid little fake and just stood there right in the middle of everything. At least he didn't hurt his leg. No, well, he could have. In fact, I think he got in the way. I think Allegra just got in the way. Here's the kickoff by Allegra. This is a better one. Mark Higgs. About to six. Just short of 30. Uh, return of 22 yards stopped by Lee Roussan. And the Eagle offensive unit back on the field, the giant defense. Leading now 10-0. But going back, I think that was a great decision by Bill Parcells. I say it's great because it worked, because they had had opportunities early. They didn't take advantage of them. They had some bad things happen. They're playing on the road. The crowd is starting to get into it. The defense is getting excited. And boom, you hit them with a fake field goal for a touchdown. It takes all the air out of their balloon. Quiets everything down. Here is Cunningham to fire. Last surge got him nine yards in the arms of Perry Williams. Fires has developed into an outstanding receiver. Well, he is, and that's the biggest thing that they do. But to get the ball to Byers, they have to block Lawrence Taylor. Let's watch him here. Here's Matt Darwin. Now, he stays between himself and Cunningham pretty well, but you have to get a little more bend. You have to give him a little more pop. You can't let him just push you into the quarterback. Second and one, it's Byers right side. First down, Eagle. Out of bounds. Johnny Cook shoved him out and into the hot seat that shot we see that Myron Guyton is back now remember that play he got hit he hit helmets with Carl Banks got a little thing and boy Bill Parcells really likes this rookie he says he's big he's fast he's tough they made 13 tackles last week against the Cowboys he is really high on him as you say well they look like he's all over the field I think the two guys that he likes the two rookies he likes Guyton and he likes David Meggett that most of them are making their presence felt thus far. Here's Cunningham to Higgs. Long ways to go. Guyton again up to lead the tackle. Well, the guy who makes the play first is Carl Banks right here. Boom, he comes across here. He gets penetration, and he doesn't give Mark Higgs anything to do. Watch 58. See him get up the field. He makes Higgs go around where he can't get his shoulder squared. Now, by the time he gets his shoulder squared, there's four blue jerseys. Second down and 12. 11.54 left in the first half. Tony and Byer behind Cunningham. Giles was the man in motion.
Jackson. In his direction, he can't hang on. That score we had up there a minute ago is correct. Tampa Bay 21, the Bears nothing. Lamar Leachman, the line coach on the left. Moves in at left cornerback now. And their six-man defensive back package is Cunningham. It's forced out of the pocket. It's going to be forced to run. Maybe a first down. Yes. A 13-yard scramble. He got the first down by a yard. You know, one thing that the Giants want to do is they want to play Cunningham on third down in a zone. They want to get back into their zones if we'll just let it go here. And see, because by a zone, what you do is you let everyone get in their zone. We can stop it now, and we can see that everyone is looking towards Cunningham but playing the zone. Then when he breaks, they can all break on him. Now, they did it, but they didn't get there soon enough. First down. Immediately by Mark Collins. A gain of only three on the completion from Cunningham. The Eagles in giant territory at about their 45 now. This will bring up second and seven. During the preseason, Randall Cunningham called his own plays, and that was the plan the plan to help him learn the offense better. Then once the season started, Buddy Ryan took that away from. Randall and gave it back to Ted Plum, offensive coordinator. He says it's just too much to think about. The handoff to Tony. Tony to about the 42, a gain of four. You know, one problem the Eagles have is they don't have a very good running game. Buddy Ryan thinks that hurts their, their defense. But the other thing is it's hard to stay with the run when you get behind. And that's what's happening to them now. It's 10 to nothing. They wanted to be patient, but you start getting behind, then you start going away from the run. That's what happened to them Monday night against Chicago. They go with four wide receivers now. High snap and the handoff is to Tony. And he's got the first down. That's a play that looked like it was out of sync and wouldn't work in any way. And they got a first nevertheless, a gain of eight. It was out of sync, but Lawrence Taylor misses a tackle. And you're not going to see that much. You see, he comes in, and I'll tell you, that's a heck of a play by Cunningham. See right there? He just had a dive right there. They miss another tackle. You see, and that's the reason he got the first down. That was Pepper Johnson that missed the one he should have had. Ron Heller just got a piece of Lawrence Taylor. Just enough off track. Here's Cunningham. The middle and tenant for Carter incomplete. He was open. You know, the Eagles said they had to rush the ball. You can see they're doing it more effectively today, but they're not passing as well. In fact, I don't think they've completed a pass to a wide receiver yet. You know, Mike Quick isn't as healthy as he as he was, and uh, we, we, we just saw Chris Carter drop that one. Cunningham, to me at least, John, looks a little nervous, a little uneasy in the pocket. Yeah, yeah, he is, and I think I think part of that is taking an early sack. That's Giles on the move. The handoff is to Tony, and the Giants are there. Johnny Cooks, Terry Kennard. Loss of two. You can get something on that left side, on that Marshall, that Taylor side. You can get, but you're not going to make a living at it. You can't keep going back to that well. You know, I think that Cunningham may still be a little shell-shocked from Monday night's game against the Bears. He had to throw 62 times or whatever, but they really put a rush on him. He's doing a lot of foot movement. Here's Cunningham, end the play, intended for Carter again. Thompson was the defender close to Carter. They, this looks like a frustrated Eagle offense right now. 
and a frustrated quarterback in right Randall Cunningham. First, Chris Carter dropped that one on him. That'll that'll help add to frustration. And again, as we mentioned early, Keith Jackson, one of his favorite receivers, is out of this game. And Mike Quick, not 100% physically. Here's Telching, standing in midfield. Megan, back at the 10. Go catch it! He held it a long time. Finally gets it to Megan. Who kneels at the 15. 21-yard punt is all he got. It is 10-0. The Giants lead 847 left first half. America's best-selling cars and trucks for the third straight year. Ford, winning again. Winning the world over. Have you driven a Ford lately? Oh, quad off you, the sun and The curve of a sleigh bed. The beauty of a porcelain vase. Quad off A country French collection from Ethan Allen. When a room looks like this, it's a pity to spend so much time in it with your eyes closed. Right now, there's a sale at your Ethan Allen Gallery. Miller Lite NFL Player of the Week was David Fulcher, making him eligible to be Player of the Year. Look for the next winner in Wednesday's USA Today and at the end of the season for the Miller Lite NFL Player of the Year. Nowhere will outside interests oh, mark the end of a beautiful friendship for Jake I quit. and the Fat Man. Wednesday. The Goodyear blimp hovering overhead over Veterans Stadium. Furnishing us with those sold-out pictures. First and ten Giants at their own 15. 8.45 left to play in the first half. Giants 10, Eagles nothing. Sims to Anderson at the line of scrimmage. Byron Evans. There's Buddy Ryan. Yeah, Buddy was saying that he said, you know, this is such a big game because the Giants have beaten everyone else in the division. He said, we're the last one they have to play. And he said, to tell me it's a big game or my team it's a big game or anyone in this town is a big game is stupid. We all know what it means. But he has some opinions, and he'll share them with you, too. Comes right out. Second down, Sims to throw. Out of the pocket is Sims, caught from behind by Clyde Simmons. He sort of lives in the shadow of Reggie White, but against the Giants, he is always a factor. Yeah, remember, he's the guy that made the touchdown that beat him on the field goal block. It was Clyde Simmons there in the Meadowlands who picked it up and ran it in for a touchdown in overtime. And that was a heck of a play, that last one. When you get up the field and you're going up the field and then the quarterback comes, you have to turn and go down the field and catch him from behind. That's a pretty good play. Third down for the Giants. They need about five to get the first. Sims asking for quiet. Of course, he won't get that. Now out of the spread formation, he gets it out to Zeke Moat. And that's enough for a first, a gain of seven. And they better get Reggie White blocked when he's over the center, or he is going to put Phil Sims right into this AstroTurf. Watch it again. I mean, he just comes right up the middle. He's lined up over the center, and he just goes right to the right of Bard Oates. And now, boom, when he gets by him, you see the problem when he lines up over the center, when he gets there, then he's right in his face. That's only the second time they've lined him up there today. Both times he, he hit Sims as he threw it. I would think they would line him up more there. And I would think the Giants. 
Bryant will have to give Bart Oates some help when he is there. O.J. Anderson, flag on the play. Anderson got about nine yards. Jerome Brown stopped him, but a penalty marker was thrown on the play, holding against the Giants. I think what the Eagles are doing is is they're just putting Reggie White over the center on passing downs, and he's playing his normal left defensive end on running downs. Holding 65 offense, first down. More and more people seem to be doing that. I know the Redskins do it with Charles Mann. The 49ers do it on occasion. Well, that was Bart Oates who got called for the holding, and who is the center who has to block Reggie White when he gets up there. And usually, if you're offensive linemen, your tackles are the best pass protectors, the guards are the next best pass protectors, and the center is the least of the pass protectors in town. Usually, he doesn't have someone like Reggie White in front of him. Here's Sims back to throw. And complete. Odessa Turner was the intended receiver. Eric Allen was the defender. The Eagles, like almost everyone else, utilize six defensive backs in what they feel is a passing situation. Second down situation, second and 17. The Giants at their uh, second and 20, beg your pardon, at the 17. Moat on the move and Sims roll out left to get away from Reggie White. Pass incomplete, almost intercepted, intended for Baker. The defender. That was one of the new things that the Giants wanted to do. They they've never really moved Phil Sims much. He's really a a drop back passer, stay in the pocket guy. And for this game to give the Eagles defense a different look, they have a couple plays in where he is going to move out side to side. Sims a tough guy. He was sick yesterday. We were supposed to meet with him, but he shut off the phones and went to bed and talked to no one. I don't think anyone ever questions Phil Simms' toughness. Nope. Here he is, back to throw it. Steps up. Over the line of scrimmage now. And out of bounds. Mike Pitts in pursuit. Picked up five, but we'll see Landetta. Hey, if Phil Simms had three receivers down here in the right side, and you will watch it if we just let it go, and we'll see that what, what he was looking at when he started to run. Now watch right down here. See how he starts up, he starts up, he starts up, and he has the three receivers right here, here, and here. Right here, here, and here, and he didn't decide. He decided that he couldn't hit any of them. So Landetta, back to kick it. Well, he said he had to keep it in the air a long time. He sure did. and that is as good as you get. Hi! Hi. Hi. I haven't seen you guys in so long. Well, we can never agree on a restaurant, right? <laughs> hey, I ordered already. I found us a great wine. Oh, a decision maker. Yeah. Oh, this is wonderful wine. I had this at David's. I served this at my place. It was a big hit. Oh, you guys, I was hoping you hadn't tried it yet. Oh, oh come on. <laughs> we finally found something we all agree on, you know? I mean, when was the last time that happened? Wow. Ernest and Julio Gallo invite you to try White Grenache. It will change the way you think about Gallo. Why is Ford Ranger America's most popular compact truck? For one thing, it has a 660 powertrain warranty and cast aluminum wheels. This Chevy doesn't. Oh, Ford Ranger has anti-lock rear brakes and electronic fuel injection. And Ranger has it all for less money than Chevy. You can bank on it. The toughest competition we have is ourselves. See your dealer now for low financing or special savings on 1990 Ford Ranger. You won't believe the shop vac. It comes with a surprise. So where's the surprise? In a minute. 
First this baby picks up stuff like nails and glass, and like a regular shop vacuum, it also picks up water. So where's the surprise? Just watch. You twist the top, lift it off, and you've got a surprisingly powerful blower. And now ShopVac puts its power to work cleaning carpet stains with Spot Check. It turns any ShopVac into a powerful carpet cleaner. ShopVac. If it doesn't say ShopVac, keep shopping. An SCC collision. Tommy Hudson pilots LSU against Reggie Slack and Auburn. Tiger meets Tiger next Saturday on CBS Sports. You can see whatever you want to see right in this area. On the left, JFK Stadium where the Army-Navy game was played for so many years. That's the Spectrum in the middle, home of the 76ers and the Flyers, and then Veterans Stadium, the home of the Eagles and the Phillies. All you got to do is hang around. Play a lot of ball around here. Cunningham Flyers tripped up by Collins. Four-yard gain. Average yards on first down. That won't get your attention very much, will it? Well, and what that does, and that puts you on in long yardage situations. And against the Eagle defense, that's what you don't want to be in. Because that's when they play their best, when they know what you're going to do. Second and six, Cunningham. Bounced out of his hands, almost intercepted by Cooks. Again, Byers is open. Update. Let's take you back to New York, Brent Musburger. That watch this play. The Green Bay Packers against the Dallas Cowboys through the quarterback's legs, off to Tall Jones. Here comes Eugene Lockhart. He huffs and puffs 40 yards for a Cowboy touchdown. 13-10. The Cowboys lead it back to pass. Cunningham five out of 11 for just 27 yards. Third and six right here, and he goes out of the spread formation. The Giants bring Lawrence Taylor. And Cunningham will scramble. Dives across midfield and gets an eagle first down. He is their leading rusher and has been for the last couple of years and is again this year. That was a heck of a chase by Lawrence Taylor. Watch 56, Jason Randall Cunningham here, number 12. And when Cunningham puts on the burners, he gains some ground there. And he knows where the first down is, and he's not going to run out of bounds. Three. He's going to take it upfield and cut back on you. Three carries for 24 yards for Cunningham. That's why he's also their leading rusher every year. There he is, back to throw it again. Maybe. Or he might take off again. Pass is caught by Giles. Was the cover man 16 yard pickup? Cunningham to Giles. Ron Heller does a nice job. The right tackle. Watch him right there in the left of the screen. He's going to come back there and knock down Carl Banks. Now, by taking down Banks, that gave Cunningham a soft corner. Then he got out there where he really had the option of running or passing. It's a fine catch by Giles. First down, Eagles at the Giant 33. Trail 10 nothing. Cunningham to throw it again. Not backwards. Knocked down by Leonard Marshall. Not a fumble. His arm was moving forward. Hey, you know, big Leonard Marshall got Mike Shad, the left guard, going backwards. And there was a 70 and a 79 all coming into 12. And just watch this. Here's Marshall. He's going to start from the right side. He starts up there. Now watch him hit the guard and the tackle and take them both back into the quarterback. That whole thing was collapsing on Cunningham. Eric Howard was there to push also. Looked like he might have been trying to bring that one back, bring it down and not throw it. After further review, the play will stand its call. Second down. He didn't review it very long. Bill Parcells wants another review. Second down and 10 in any case. Now holding a 
second. I think maybe they are still reviewing that. He looked at this. Second clock, please be reset to 11 seconds. Tom Dooley. Well, sometimes while they do these reviews, they keep the, the clock running. Then the guy comes out and sees it. Now, what they reviewed it for was to see if it was a forward pass or not. His arm is coming through, so that, I mean, it was going down, it was going through, and that was just an incomplete forward pass. Although I think it slipped out of his hand. I think it did. I think he tried to stop. But the fact that his arm was going forward and his hand was going forward, that made it a pass. Second and ten. Myers. Right side in inside the 30. Pick up a five. Stop by Banks. Clock running 320 left now. Or will be shortly. You know what the Eagles were doing on that pad? It was an interesting thing. They were setting up an option. They had Byers had the ball, and then they had their fullback, Anthony Tony, was in a pitch position. So Byers got the handoff, was going down the line, and was setting up an option run. He kept it. Byers did. Got five, and it's third and five. Cunningham. Quickly. That's the Carter. Another Ohio Stater who's close to a first down. Stopped by Renee Thompson. A gain of four. And boy, the fans don't like this one. This is short of a first down. He didn't get the first down. And Buddy Ryan ran his field goal team out there. Zelchik is the holder. Zendejas. Mike Quick's out here all by himself. Bet there's no one covering him. Upstairs to Quick, and it's picked off by Terry Kennard. Flag on the play. Way downfield, the flag. Here's Kennard. Taken out of bounds by Giles, a penalty marker on the play. And a fight also on the play. Zendejas in the fracas. That's a mistake. Kickers don't get in fracases. Buddy Ryan says it's okay, the penalty's on them. The trainer's checking the kicker. The official is standing down on the five-yard line saying that was pass interference. Spot the ball on the five. Bring it down here. Mike Quick sneaked in there. He was split out here on this field goal all by himself. Watch it here. See, here's the field goal. Here's Mike Quick out here. They finally realize that they come running over. Delchik tries to get it out there. Does. There's three defenders there. They call pass interference. One of the giant defenders just grabbed Mike Quick. And it wasn't the one who intercepted the no, ball. It was not Kennard. They had three there. have the ball at the giant five after the confusion ends. First and goal at the five. And you'll see the grab right there. That's Sheldon White. First and goal at the five. Cunningham looking outside into a crowd. He's lucky that one wasn't picked off. The intended for Giles and Banks and Collins were right there. Division rivalry games, you tend to see more stuff like this. You tend to see more fake field goals, more fights, more controversy. That's a great thing about teams playing each other twice a year. And, and, a build up thing. and 110 times <laughs> in the history. Two minute warning coming shortly. Cunningham up the middle and he's going to score.
It's Randall Cunningham's first rushing touchdown of the season, and it was a painful one. It was a great move that he makes, though. So Randall Cunningham likes to get down here and spread out the defense, and then look and look, and then if there's nothing there and you see a lane, you pump the ball. Now watch this move. I mean, he got up in the air, going over on his back, a cartwheel, the whole thing. But see, he has them split out, four wide receivers. They're playing man-to-man. -man. Now, if you don't stay in your lane, you give them any kind of hole, that's going to be a touchdown. It's lucky he didn't break his neck or his arm or something. See, here's the thing that they do. By spreading out the defense here, now they get this type of thing. So all, they, all he has to do, if there's nothing here in the lanes, then he can come back here and run it. See, now, this is how the play develops. Now, if we go back here and you just stop it right now, you see the lane that he sees here all the way to the goal line. When Randall Cunningham sees that, he is going to take it for the touchdown. It's tough to contain him and not give him inside lanes. Plays 63 yards. They kept the ball three minutes, 46 seconds. Giants lead the Eagles 10-7. Two minutes, one second left to play in the first half. Megan and Ingram back deep for the Giants. Good kick. Megan, three yards deep in the end zone. And Ingram comes over. He wanted to come out. And Ingram shoved him back. Two-minute warning coming up. I think Ingram came over and said, hey, I'm a three-year veteran. You're a rookie. Let me make the decision. And he made it forcefully. Or even worse. Motorcraft spark plug has to fire 500 times a minute. Over its life, that's a spark five miles long. Shouldn't you install that peace of mind? Motorcraft quality parts from Ford. My athlete's foot kept flaring up. Put it out, it just flare up again. Then my doctor told me about Tenactin. It cures recovering athlete's foot. Use it regularly, and it'll keep the fire from coming back. Tenactin puts the fire out for good. Just off Route 19 in St. Petersburg is a place where you can learn to ski the Alps and shoot the rapids all in the same building. At Bill Jackson Sporting Goods, you can practice everything from a stem Christie to an Eskimo roll. But if you go there, remember, bring your imagination and your visa card. Because Bill Jackson doesn't promise you Sun Moritz, and he doesn't take American Express. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. Downtown Philadelphia, the Giants 10, the Eagles 7 at Veterans Stadium. At the half, Brent Nerve with scores and highlights. And Brent also has a conversation with Raiders owner Al Davis, who earlier this week hired Art Shell, who is, I'm sure you know, the first black coach in the NFL's modern era. We have a rather unusual situation here in that the two leading rushers for both teams are the quarterbacks, Sims and Cunningham. 10-7 Giants. The pocket was collapsing. Odessa Turner was the target. Mike Pitts put the heat on Sims. One thing you know that Sims is going to get that all day, and I think coming into the game, he knew it. He said, one thing I know when I play the Eagles, I am going to take some hits. So, I think that's something a quarterback has to think of during the week. You can't come in thinking, I'm going to be untouched, I'm going to be unscathed. 
You know you're going to get it, so you just have to stand there and take it. Second and ten. Sims again has the pocket collapsing, but gets it to Megan. And Megan gets out of bounds outside the 40. Andre Warner has pushed him out. 22-yard pickup. Well, this Megan really gives the Giants an added dimension because I think someday they're going to start running him out of the backfield. Now they just put him in there. You see him? And have him run pass patterns. That's Seth Joyner covering him. He comes straight up the middle, gives him a little boom, boom, boom shuffle, and then whap, takes it to the outside. Look at the pressure on Sims. He's back. This is what he's looking at. His left side starting to cave in. He's getting it from his backside, but he found Megan. He goes out to his left. And Sims trots out of bounds at about the 48-yard line. I think Bill Parcells just gave Phil Sims the next play. I think maybe the way to get away from that pressure is like that. And you don't see the Giants do this much. You don't see Phil Sims do this much. But this is a reason. Look at the pressure he's had. He's been sacked once. He's been hurried ten times. He's been knocked down five. And that's not even the first half yet. But when he goes home, you know, tomorrow... He's going to wake up a sore, sore guy. So is the other, the other quarterback. Second and four. They give it to Megan. He got enough for a first down, I think. Seth Joyner stopped him. Doug Riesenberg says he got a first down. But he's not wearing the right color shirt to no. make that judgment. Well, Wes Hopkins came in there and really gave him a hit at the end. But it wasn't enough because he did make the first down. Again, Megan really hasn't run from this position. This could be the first time that he has run from this position. But watch that shot that Wes Hopkins came at the end there. Sims gets it outside to Ingram. He has not got a bounce. Stops the clock. The Giants have two timeouts remaining. The Eagles have all three of theirs. Frizzell knocked him out of bounds. Everett was coming on a blitz. Well, Frizzell and Everett are the two defensive backs that come in to make six defensive backs. As you said, on that time, Everett was the cover guy, or Frizzell was the covered guy, and Everett was the blitz guy, 42. He was the guy who was right there pushing Sims to throw the ball. Second and one, the Giants take out the wide receiver package and put in the tight end package. And now they take a timeout. Second and one. They have one timeout remaining. They lead 10 to 7. Did you know that there's only one company that's willing to stand behind its 800 service and guarantee that your calls get through? We have a new AT&T 800 assurance policy which says the call must get through. If you're using AT&T's basic 800 service and all of a sudden there's a problem and you're not getting your calls, well, we can start to send those same calls to a regular telephone line right there in your office, and we can do that within an hour, guaranteed, get you back in service. We could probably do it quicker. Coming up next Saturday at 2.30 Eastern Time, number 11-ranked Auburn against LSU. Auburn features one of the nation's top defensive teams and one of the nation's top passers. In fact, maybe... In the eyes of the Pro Scouts, the best in the country this year, that would be Reggie Slack. Auburn not known for having a, a devastating passing attack, but this year they do. And a good defense. Second and one. Three tight ends. Central throw it. Gets it out to Howard Cross. The third of those tight ends who gets a giant first down. Frizzell on the stop. Big Howard Cross is the third tight end, but he's the biggest of the tight ends at 250 pounds, and that's the first pass he's caught in the NFL. Megan hit behind the line of scrimmage by Reggie White. The Giants trying to hurry it up. One timeout left is all. seconds. Now West. Stems to throw it. Megan up the middle. 
Another first down, and that got him in field goal range. 11-yard pickup stopped by Seth Joyner. They, they got a good matchup, the Giants and Phil Parcells. Bill Parcells and Phil Sims, they got Megan on Joyner, and they've been winning that one this first half. Parcells was saying yesterday that they had to convince him at draft time to take Megan. He said, I've already got one short running back, and Joe Morris, I don't want him. Yeah, well, David Megan is only 5'7". And he said he wasn't going to have another 5'7 running back. Then he told the scouts, but if you can guarantee me that this guy could punt or kickoff return and get a big one for me or a touchdown for I'll take him. They said, we'll guarantee it. He took him. Marcel says, now I'm happy as heck because he's a fine running back and a heck of a receiver. And I was talking to Joe Woolley, who works with the Eagles, Jerome Brown being worked on on the sideline. Joe Woolley, the Eagle scouting staff, and he said, I tried. I'm afraid of that number 30 being Megan. I tried to get our people to draft him, and they wouldn't take him either. 41 yards for Allegra. Hostetler holding. It's good. And it had plenty extra. If he's got a bad leg, it didn't show on that one. Hey, this is the type of game that going into it I expected you know the the defensive game both defenses rising to the occasion Lawrence Taylor chasing Cunningham White chasing Sims hitting them as they're throwing all those types of things ending in field goal not getting first down we've had I think in this first half exactly what we expected and it seems to always occur when these two play and then usually ends in a barn burner somehow in the second half with, you know, overtime and block kicks and, you know, defensive linemen running one in. Something like that will happen before today is over. Nine plays, 56 yards. They kept it a minute, 56 seconds. And they left the Eagles with only five seconds on the clock before halftime. Jerome Brown just has a bruised knee, and he will be back at the half. The NFL today with Brent Nerve and that interview with your old boss, Al Davis. How do you think Art Shell will do? I think Art Shell will do very, very well. I think he was an excellent choice, and he'll be an excellent head coach. Short kick, and that should take care of the half, and does. That's the end of the first half with the score. The Giants, 13. The Eagles, 7. CBS Ford coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? Shop back wet dry vacuums. If you own a house, you've got to own a shop back. And by Gallo White Renault. It will change the way you think about Gallo. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Mercedes-Benz, engineered like no other car in the world. The Gillette Afro Plus system and Gillette Foaming, together the best a man can get. And by Levi's Dockers. If you're not wearing Dockers, you're just wearing pants. Pat Summerall and John Madden at Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia. Comparing comparing what the quarterbacks did in the first half Sims 10 out of 19 Cunningham 7 out of 15 considerable yards advantage for Sims but they both lead their teams in rushing both have picked up 29 yards on the ground Megan back deep along with Mark Ingram and he had a big first half and I think in this second half Again, we're going to see the Giants keep working the ball to make it on passing. And Dejas kick goes to make it or in that direction. All right, won't bounce out of bounds, and finally it does. And so they can make him kick it again, or they can bring it out to the 35. Hey, that is a dangerous thing. When that ball comes down there, and you have a rookie there and you're a coach and you can't see it because that's a, the far side of the field for Bill Parcells and the ball is bouncing. You don't know whether you're going to get it, you're going to fumble it, it's going to go out of bounds or what. 
Luckily, the ball went out of bounds, and as you said, it will now be spotted on the 35-yard line. Giants open the second half with three tight ends. The pitch is back to Anderson. A pickup of two, perhaps, maybe three. And a flag on the play, a late flag. Here's where Sims has thrown it. But you can look that that line that goes across is 15 yards. So he hasn't thrown any passes over 15. He's four to the five to the left, 0 for four in the middle, six to nine to the right. So his success is passing left and passing right under 15 yards. And he hasn't had time to throw it deep. Here's Tom Dooley to tell us about what that flag was about. Well, it's against the Eagles. And it's a big one. It's a 15-yarder. Well, he never is going to tell us. But it was a big one. Whatever it was. First down, Giants at the Eagle 48. First and 10, and Sims back to put it up. Mark Ingram made the reception and took the hit in the back. Didn't phase him. But Phil Sims had good pass protection that time, and he had either Ingram or Zeke Moat that he could have hit. You see Ingram there. He comes up, plants to the outside. He comes inside. Now, that's a zone. He worked outside. The linebacker was coming to the out, Al Harris, and he worked right inside of him. See, the corner dropped off. The linebacker worked out, and Ingram came right, boom, right around the linebacker. First and 10 Giants at the Eagle 31. 13-7. Cross was the motion man. This is Anderson. Mike Pitts and Wes Hopkins up to make the stop after a gain of three. Buddy Ryan defenses will always do that. Get the safety involved in the defense. And that's how they call it the 46. Remember with Doug Plank was number 46 of the Bears. They put him up like a linebacker. That time it was Wes Hopkins. Now when you take your safety and you put him up on the line of scrimmage, that puts eight guys up, and you only have seven blockers. There'll always be a free guy. Three tight ends on the same side this time. Sims looking to Bavaro. Hit down by Byron Evans. Another three-yard gain. It'll bring up the third down four. One thing I've noticed just at the start of this drive is that the giant pass protection is a little better it looks like they have the eagle defense under control a little now and i never felt they did the first half the first half you got the feeling that the pass protection was crumbling around sims all the time just as he let the ball go third and four now they go with a four wide receiver pack. that's ingram on the move Isaiah Jenkins, a gain of three, and that'll be a yard short of a first down or about two feet short. Well, that's either a stupid pass or a stupid pass pattern. When you're third and five and you have a receiver run a pass pattern and he catches it and leaves you fourth down, that's either a bad pass pattern or a bad pass. But I can't believe that a receiver would run a yard short of a first down. That's what Sims is telling Bill Parcells there. He was open, yeah, but he got to get the first where you have to do this. From 39 yards away. No good. Plenty of distance, but wide right by Allegre. And so the Eagles will take over. 13-7 Giants. I think they should have signs that help us. They have signs that like, slow down, cop hiding behind building. Young man, you're in big trouble. <laughs> I hate that when they ask you. Do you know how fast you're, you're going? going? Oh, no. You know, I tell them, you know why I said, how about you? You had to catch up with me. <laughs> I was driving down the street, and I saw a sign. It said, slow down, road coming to an end. <laughs> what am I slowing down for? I don't want to go off the cliff slowly. Really? Levi's 100% cotton dockers. If you're not wearing dockers, you're just wearing pants. Oh, I love what is it, wrong way. How do they know where I'm going? <laughs> At 1,184,880 miles, 
A Mercedes-Benz 180D is in the Guinness Book of World Records as the world's most durable car. Just how far can a Mercedes actually go? Hmm. Frankly, nobody knows. Open your eyes up! Hey, check out the old time. Come on, will you? Come on! chance of a lifetime. I know. Hey, hey, see if you can hang on to this. Thirteen seven. Here's what didn't get the first down. Well, we're going to see the motion, and we'll get three guys out here. Here's Turner. He comes up, and he's going to run it out. But if you're going to run the out, you got to get up, and you have to get past the first down marker. Now, watch him here. Here's a first down marker there. he got to get out here. He leaves that thing short. Then there's a good tackle right there, and he's that much short of the first down, so they had to kick the field goal, then they missed the thing. On third down, you always got to get up beyond the first down mark. So the Eagles take over and fires. Tries to get around the right side. Could have been a fumble. The Eagles have it back. Alexander comes up with the ball. The offensive center, they think he's going to be around and good for a long time. Well, they moved him from guard to, to center, and Buddy Ryan says that this guy could be an all-pro center, be one of the best centers in the league. And all, all guys like to be moved to center. I'll tell you what it does. It adds years to your career. And in most cases, you don't wind up one-on-one. -on -one. Here's Cunningham. In the arms of Lawrence Taylor. Four-yard pickup. The guy that can tackle in the open field. Anthony Tony was out there to block him. This is what Cunningham has done so far. He's had no success when he runs out of the pocket going to his left. And then he's had success going to the right. And here's why he doesn't go to the left. Watch Taylor. He's not rushing now. He's backing out. Watch Tony is a receiver. Then he tries to block him there. That's not much of a block. But it's a good open field tackle by Taylor. And it's a very intelligent move by Cunningham not to go in that direction. Deep for Giants. Over his head. Incomplete. And no flag. Mark Collins back there with him. I'll tell you, the play before that, Anthony Tony missed Lawrence Taylor. But boy, did he block him on that last one. He darn near decletes him. Watch. Here's Taylor here. Watch him come into the backfield, and you're going to see Tony, number 25, right there. Boink! He just knocked Taylor right on his back. Of course, he was coming off a tackle, I know that. But when you're that good, you get double teams like that. Got him airborne. Telsic's kick this time is a good one. Megan. Cut down and a fine open field tackle by Ty Allard. 47-yard punt, a return of only two. 13-7 Giants, third quarter. Over the past decade, all other lines of cars have led Mercedes-Benz in one crucial category. Depreciation. Sometimes great cars finish last. Mercedes-Benz, the resale legend. You're looking sharp. You're looking good. You've come so far. And we know how to make the most of who you are. Father to son. Gillette Atra Plus System and Gillette Foamy Shave Cream together, the best a man can get. Do it yourself. Do it for yourself. Do yourself proud with me. 
Minwax. Wood finish for beautiful color like no other. And Minwax polyurethane for fast drying protection that lasts. It's a pound with Minwax and wood. <laughs> By signing up now in the Army's Delayed Entry Program, any skill training I choose is mine when I graduate. Guaranteed. Be all that you can be. Get it in the light in the Army. Live Monday from the Grand Ole Opry in Nashville. It's country music's biggest night. Join your hosts, Kenny Rogers and Ann Murray, for the 23rd Annual Country Music Awards. Overhead, the Goodyear Blimp of America from Houston, Texas. Piloted by Mark Kynette from the Woodlands, Texas. As always, furnishing us with those great shots of Veterans Stadium and the Spectrum and JFK Stadium in the background. That thing flies up from Houston. Takes a couple of days, I think. Yeah, if it goes that slow, it takes forever. Jamari's Carthon out of the backfield. 46-yard line stopped finally by Al Harris. 18-yard gain. Well, there's a guy who doesn't get to run the ball much or carry the ball much. Number 44, Maurice Carthon, one of the good blockers in this league. Of course, when the Giants went to the Super Bowl, he was a lead blocker for Joe Morris on all those runs. And I don't know that the defense really concentrates too much on Carthon when he's probably out. not. He got a good block from Bavaro that time. Here's Sims to throw again. Up into the pocket and sack. For the second time today, that's Clyde Simmons from behind. You know, the guy that's been kind of quiet is Mark Bavaro. In fact, I, I think on that play, Sims was trying to go to Bavaro, and he was covered by Seth Joyner pretty well. You know, if, if, they, if they cover a tight end with a linebacker, the linebacker, the tight end has to beat the linebacker. I think that's what Sims was counting on and had to take that sack. This time it is Megan split wide to the right. And no one's on no him. No one on him now. Now they change, finally. They get Andre Waters over on Megan. Flag on the play. Sims looking, chased, and sacked by Reggie White. thrown it to make it for a touchdown and had he not had holding there was a jailbreak on that play but Megan was out here on Andre Waters and he had him beat deep holding number 60 offense down is declined third down they declined the penalty it's third down the holding is on Eric Moore, the right guard, number 60. And, of course, he's holding against Reggie White, but that's a pretty good block. When you can take a guy like Reggie White and put him on his back, that's pretty good. Reggie White also gets the sack. He gets up quickly, doesn't he? Here's Vegas. I know it. Had Sims had time, he could have hit him. Third 19, the Eagles on a blitz. Sims out of the pocket. Flag on the play again, incomplete. Well, now they say it was a catch by Lionel Manuel. He apparently got both feet down in bounds. But as you said, there's a penalty marker, and that was back there against the Giants. Well, Manuel didn't have enough for the first down. I think they've got to take the penalty, though. The offense. Now. That's the second one in a row on Eric Moore. Eric Moore started today in place of Damian Johnson, who has a bad back. Of course, the last couple of weeks, he had been starting at left tackle in place of John Elliott. Damian Johnson was out here early before the game. They didn't know if he could play or not. They tried him out. Decided to start more. Third and 29. The ball back at the Giant 36 now. Or 26 make that. Tom Dooley still in conversation. Of course, I think that they were going to, as you said, they had to take the penalty anyway. 
even though whether that was a legal catch or not. Let's watch Lionel Manuel on the sideline here. They said that he caught the ball and was inbound. He had both feet in. Now you can't see on that if he had control or not. But he did a good job of keeping both feet in. That, that's an amazing athletic move. Well, if they rule it was not a completed pass, it would be fourth down instead of third down. I think he had it. Yeah, he did have it. As you say, that's, that's a big thing. If it's an incomplete pass, then they lose the down, too. The play will stand as called third down. Still third down. So they did the right thing. They accepted the penalty, and it was a catch. So it's third and 29. Sims out to his left. That one's incomplete. Juggled and out of bounds. It was manual again. Eric Everett the pass defender. Notice when they roll with that roll, they roll away from Reggie White. Well, that's one way to get away from Reggie White. The only thing is the defense can roll their secondary with you, and that's what's happening to the Giants. Reduces the size of the field. Landetta back. Henry Gizmo Williams back deep. And he'll have a chance to move with this one, maybe from one man. And away from another man. And out of bounds, close to midfield. Gary Reason finally got him out of bounds. Renee Thompson was the first man down, and he's the man who missed the gizmo. 7.58 left to play in the third quarter, 13-7 Giants. good beer is like a good man. If you look beneath the surface, invariably, the best will come shining through. Smooth, never bitter, Miller beer. Recently, Road and Track magazine concluded a search for the world's five best cars. After exhaustive testing and analysis, they chose four exotic sports cars. And even more significantly, only one sedan. The Mercedes-Benz 300E. Send up a cross foot. Give me an app check. There's a place in the friendly skies where not everyone's so friendly. Stop. Check it out. Over 9,000 mechanics of United Airlines work Give here. Give me a mini grinder. They're picky, fussy, stubborn. But if you fly, they're the best friends you will ever have. United, rededicated to giving you the service yeah. you deserve. Come fly the friendly skies. An SEC collision. Tommy Hudson pilots LSU against Reggie Slack and Auburn. Tiger meets Tiger next Saturday on CBS Sports. Veteran Stadium in Philadelphia. Pat Summerall with John Madden, the Giants, and the Eagles. The 110th time they've played. And a reminder that next doubleheader game coming up, 49ers at New Orleans, seen by most people. Phoenix, Washington, Atlanta, and the Rams. Right now, the Eagles and the Giants. First and 10, Philadelphia at their own 48. over the right side picked up six stop by Taylor you know one thing uh, talking about Randall Cunningham has only thrown 47 yards I think this is one of the reasons here's Keith Jackson who has become his favorite receiver 
and he injured his back. In fact, it was against the 49ers a few weeks ago. Ronnie Lott kneed him in the back, went into spasm, thought he was okay, went into spasm again last week against the Bears, and he was in the hospital until Thursday. This is Tony. Right side, the ball is loose. Cunningham gets it back. No gain. Cunningham is hurt. Matt Cavanaugh is the backup quarterback. Loss of three. Eric Howard is the guy who makes a play here. Watch him, Pat. The nose tackle here for the Giants. This is the way you play nose tackle. You start off with big arms like that, hit into the center, boom, drive him back, whap, take that arm, that right arm, and knock it right into the ball carrier, grab the center with you. That is handling the middle. And then you get the quarterback who recovers the fumble kicked in the head. That's yeah. effective. That quarterback didn't want to be down there recovering a fumble. Came yeah. out of the spread. That's all kinds of time. Running away from Taylor. But that's a tough job. You can't run away from him. Not too long, anyway. Speed kills. Hey, that's the thing with Lawrence Taylor. We talked about before, not only all this great talent and ability and instinct and reaction but watch him he was spying that time he was just going to mirror cunningham he was mirrored and then once he saw him and put the sights on him and zeroed in on him he went after him but that's what they call a spy or mirror and he once he starts to mirror he's like one of those heat-seeking missiles you just don't get away from it play however remember a couple years ago buddy ryan says that he doesn't think anyone can catch randall cunningham when he runs he said unless it's lawrence taylor and i'm not even sure he can catch him well i think buddy knows now and i think randall knows now and i think lawrence taylor knows now well, well he Adams said block in the back number 38 on the receiving team first down i'm out Lawrence Taylor caught him in that game. He pulled a hamstring doing it, but he looked up when to the doctors and said, does he believe I can do it now? Meeting Buddy Ryan. Cold filtered. Never heat pasteurized. Miller Genuine Draft. For those who've discovered its smooth, real draft beer taste, the world is a very cool place. So tap into the cold. Cold filtered Miller Genuine Draft. Bo knows baseball. Bo knows football. Bo knows basketball, too. Bo knows tennis? No. Ball oh, no way. Ball, you don't know Diddley. Night, Andy. It's 847. It's 22 degrees. And Andy Cavana's father is learning all about his antifreeze. Advanced formula pressed on. Giants 13, Eagles 7. The Philadelphia Navy are close by. Megat is number 30. Yeah, he's five foot seven. The guy who's tackled him is Gizmo Williams. He's five foot six. So we got all these big guys, you know, nose tackles, guys, 300, 350 pounds. And it boils down to one-on-one, -on -one, a guy 5'6 and a guy 5'7. Both of them about 180 pounds. Sims on first down, rolls left. Reggie White is in his face. Mark 
Bavaro was the intended receiver for another NFL update. Let's send you back once more to Brent Musburger. Seven points on this touchdown pass by Mike Tomzak to Sanders, and now it is 28 to 21. Back to Pat. Tampa Bay Buccaneers hanging tough. The Bears coming back with second and ten. The Giants with their own 11. Sims draws away. O.J. Anderson hit behind the line of scrimmage by Jerome Brown, number 99. And the crowd, again, is very vocal, a loss of three. Hey, Jerome Brown does a spin in here, but you watch him. He's going to come spinning right into the hole. Watch him spin there, see him spin, and when he gets around, boom, there's O.J. Anderson. Hey, when you get that Jerome Brown, he's about... 300 pounds, he gets that thing spinning, it's about 350. I think when he ended it, ran in the he was probably the most surprised guy in the joint. Third and 13, the Giants have 44 yards rushing today, the Eagles have 78. Out of the sprint, Phil Sim gets a good snap. And out of the end zone and tackled at the five by Seth Joyner. They know defense. They understand defense. Big pass rush. Joyner was on a delayed blitz. He was coming in late. He saw Sims, and he was able to come up with a sack. Four sacks by the Eagle. Mandetta from the end zone gets off a good one. This way, we have this one. Is Cole Williams. It's back to the 45. Stopped by Greg Cox. A 54-yard punt. Landetta, the hang time, 4.7. And that is when you need a punter because the, the defense had things going. They just sacked Sims. They just backed him up. That's when you find out what your punter's worth. When he can get in that end zone, get on that back line, that end line, under a heavy rush and punt a ball like that, he is a deserving punter. They push the Eagles back to their own 45 at Cunningham. Fires to fires. He's open again, the same pattern. And twice. It's hit him in the shoulders and he's dropped it. Anytime that you keep your hands close to your body, that's going to happen to you. And Byers is a fine receiver in this league. But he gets his hands too close to his shoulder pad. That's why you have to catch it with your hands out in front. And watch what happens here. You see his hands are in close. His hands are in close to his body. Now the ball hits his shoulder pads and his hands at the same time. And bounces out. On second down. Giants blitz. Incomplete. In the direction of Carter, who couldn't get away from Perry Williams. It'll bring up third and ten. The Eagle passing attack has not been untracked all day long. Now the Giants have done a good job of one pass rushing and pass coverage. Because I don't know that Anthony, uh, 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 that Carter or Quick has done anything. Chris Carter or Mike Quick on the other side. Mike Cunningham hasn't done anything. He's 0 for 3 this half. The Giants put in their ex extra defensive backs on third and 10. Timeout. Philadelphia. Cunningham will come over and talk to Ted Blum. I think one thing they really, the Eagles really haven't gotten in sync in this second half offensively. We remind you that next week, John and I will be 90 miles up the New Jersey Turnpike for the Redskins visit to the Meadowlands against the Giants. San Francisco goes to Dallas. It all begins, of course, with the NFL today at 12.30. And then Philadelphia will be at Phoenix. The NFL today featuring Will McDonough, Brent Busberger, Dick Butkus, and Irv Cross. 
They all like to laugh. Cunningham 0 for 3 this half. And I think the, the giant defense, a combination of putting good pressure, mostly by Lawrence Taylor, and that a good zone defense that the Giants may play better than anyone. They had some confusion in their secondary, the Giants did. Open and knocked down. Ron Johnson was open. Terry Kennard made a great recovery, a great move on the ball, and knocked it away. Hey, Cunningham didn't put a lot of mustard on that pass. He left it hang up there because, look, Johnson's open. He's open. He's open. And watch, you're going to see 43 come into your picture. I think that ball hung up there too long. Combination of that and a heck of a play by Terry Kennard. So the Eagles again have to punt. John Telchik back. 4.21 left to play third quarter. It's 13-7. Giants. High kick will be fielded by Megan. Signals fair catch and makes it at the 18. Make it the 19. Where the Giants will take over. We're at Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia. The NFC Eastern Division matchup between the Giants and the Eagles. Giants 4-0, the Eagles 2-2. Two two. The Giants would be 4-0 in the division if they win today. Total yards minus for the Eagles in the second half. The Giants have a total of 181. They have the ball first and 10 at their own 19. They give us the Anderson. Nothing is working on the ground. Stopped by Al Harris. Well, again, I think that, that, that both of these defenses are, are strong against the run. I, if you're going to do any good against this Philadelphia defense, you have to be able to throw a lot on first down, I think. You have to be able to get that front block and work on that secondary. The Giants haven't been able to get that done consistently. Second and nine, they go with three tight ends. That's cross in motion. He's going to stay in a block. Sin gets it out to Cross, who juggled it and watched it get away. Cross looks like a tight end who's a good blocker. I usually say that, you know, that's about the <laughs> yeah. blind date that has a nice personality. The tight end's a good blocker, can't catch. Someone said the cross is big, 6'6", 250, good blocker, as you say. But sometimes when you throw him the ball, he hurts it. And he just hurt that one. I think he's meant to stay in there as a blocker and an outlet. But sometimes you have to throw to your outlet. Third and nine. Stephen Baker out of bounds, but a penalty on the play, enough for a first down the yardage. Good pass protection for Phil Sims that time. He had the chance to pat it a couple times before he threw it. Hey, one thing, Phil Sims will stand in that pocket. Offsides, number 59 defense. Tony is declined. First down. First down, Giants. That's Seth Joyner. He lined up offsides. But watch the protection he has in the pocket. You see, if we can just stop it right now, you see, that's the pocket. You see, now he can stand up in there. Then he pats it, pats it, pats it. But that was good protection, good time. The first down was to Baker. Here's Maurice Carthon. Maybe he got a yard. Two, perhaps. Mike Golick the man who made the stop. So the way the Giants run, they don't run a heck of a lot better than the Eagles. And today, the Eagles are running better than them. And there is a rumor that Herschel Walker is going to be traded, and he wants to be traded to the Giants. And to me, I could see how that would make sense. It would certainly make sense, depending upon the price. Here's Sims back to throw going to be hit just as he lets it go. And the pass is incompleted, intended for Odessa Turner. Eric Allen back.
right there with him. Again, he was under pressure. Well, you know, a Buddy Ryan defense, I said to play before that Sims had good time. And once you have good time, I'll guarantee you, Buddy Ryan will come with a blitz the next time. And there was Byron Evans, the guy who hit him just as he threw it. That's Buddy Ryan answer. Okay, you got good time. I'll show you good time. Watch this one. 17 hurries on Bill Sims. Four sacks. Been knocked down seven times. Ingram is the man in motion. Now he stays back there with Sims and then checks out. Megan. First down. Phil Sims is a tough guy. Watch this one. Watch the pressure he's going to get. Get from the left side. It'll be the, the right side of the screen. His left side. Watch him coming up there. Watch he throws the ball. Doink. There's Mike Pitts right there. Tell you, he knows he's going to throw it. And he knows after he throws it, he's going to get hit. He's not going to see too many caught. Not that they won't be caught. He just won't be able to see it. He's spreading it around today. He has thrown passes to 11 different receivers. A handoff is to Megan. Inside the Eagle 40, tripped up by Reggie White, a gain of eight. The Eagle still down. That looks like it's Reggie White. been doing a pretty good job against Reggie White is Doug Riesenberg, the Giants' right tackle. Reggie has raised most havoc when he's played over the center on Bart Oaks. Looks like it's his right arm. See, they're checking his hand to see if he can squeeze. The rotation, again, that's all in the elbow and shoulder that they're checking. That's the elbow they're looking at right now. Yeah, he's right there in the middle of the screen. 92, you see him, he's just turning there. It's probably going to happen as he comes down. Got jammed backwards there. Well, he had to pile up on top of him like he was bench pressing the pile. You know, when you get down there on the sideline, John, and you look at bodies flying around like that, and you hear the noise when they hit each other, you wonder how any of us ever did it. I, know, I think that was the thing that I missed the most, you know, coming up here and being in the booth, and you kind of removed a little. And then you get down on the sideline, and you get and you say, holy, you know, you know, they were really shooting live bullets out here, weren't they? It's scary. And Reggie White is up. And I hope he's okay, Reggie. White, when you talk about the defensive players in this league, and Reggie White, one of the best, maybe the best defensive lineman in the game, one of the best that's ever played the game. I remember one time we were here, Tennessee was playing when he was in college. You and I were standing down under the goalpost, and I said, they've got a guy. No, we were at the Meadowlands. I beg your pardon. Yeah. I said, they've got a guy that they tell me nobody can block. I didn't believe that. But it's turned out that's pretty close to being true. Papusi has taken his place. And they go right at him. That's Megan spinning to the 30. Andre Waters made the stop. You know, that was the thing we were talking about, about David. Megan Parcells was saying yesterday, we started out using him as a return guy, kick return guy. Then we used him as a receiver. He said, I'd like to see what he can do as a running back. I think before this is over, David Meggett could very well be the starting running back for the Giants. I think you're right. And they'll go back to the Joe Morris type of attack. That's Anderson. Behind the line of scrimmage by Jerome Brown. You know, Jerome Brown playing the best game that I've seen. In fact, he had to switch hats there. He was borrowing uh, Reggie White's hat. White's I think, back. I know it. He borrowed White's hat. He's right there. Got White's hat on. He's playing like White. I mean, that quick move. Boom. He's in the backfield. Grabs O.J. Anderson. Spins him around. Throws him to the turf. 
gives White his hat back, takes another one back. Maybe he's got something in that hat. <laughs> but White can't get it adjusted. Second and 12. Here's Sims back to throw. Under pressure again. Gets it to Megat. Incomplete pass. Byron Evans was the defender. Third down. Hey, that, that pocket again is starting to collapse on Sims. He's either getting hit and knocked down or having to throw when he doesn't want to. But watch these white jerseys just collapse that whole pocket on him. You see the difference there? Sims gets hit after he throws it, but he can't step up. He has to step parallel as compared to stepping into his throw. Third and 12, the 11th play of the drive coming up now. They've kept the ball almost four minutes. 20 seconds left in the third quarter. And the giant lead is 13-7. To make it. And there in a hurry with a good sure tackle is Wes Hopkins. A gain of five, but they'll have to settle again for Allegre. Now the Eagles changed their coverage. They had Byron Evans had been covering Megat. They had Al Harris cover Megat. That time they had their free safety, Wes Hopkins, and he got the job done. Which seems much more intelligent. That's the end of the third quarter with the score, the Giants 13. The Eagles 7, we now pause for a word from your local station. This is CBS. The shape is distinctively advanced. The cockpit designed for comfortable travel over time and distance. Honda Prelude SI, a slightly ahead of its time machine. The place is cool. The place is hot. The place has got what no place else has got. You're looking great. You're out of sight. are moving to Diet Pepsi, the right one. Get the inside word from the locker room. Eagles wrap up today on Channel 10. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Miller Genuine Draft. Cold filtered for real draft taste, so tap into the cold. The U.S. Army, where you get an edge on life. Be all you can be. And by Chrysler, where we still believe there is no luxury without engineering. Ready to start the fourth quarter with Raul Alegre from 45 yards out. Hostetler holding. That was good. A little breathing room as the Giants now lead 16 to 7. The Eagles will take over. To begin the fourth quarter. And you say that does give you the breathing room, and Bill Parcells knows it because now that makes two scores that the Eagles need. And the way the Giants have been playing defense, that could be an impossibility. We have 14 minutes and 55 seconds left. 16-7. Giants lead at Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia. Matt Summerall, John Madden. Neither team has been able to do anything on the ground. The Giants' biggest gainer was a fake field goal, and I suppose you could say the Eagles' biggest gainer was a fake field goal. And I think I think that's going to be 
that way all year for these two teams. Buddy Ryan's team is going to be a defensive pass rush, a Reggie White and a Randall Cunningham offense. The Giants are going to be defense and a Phil Simms offense. Keith Sherman. With some room. Chased it out of bounds at midfield. Adrian White finally knocked him out of bounds after a turn of 45 yards. Are back in business. Sherman is going to take it up the left side. Now, as he goes up those numbers, the whole giant team comes into that side. Now he brought them in. Now he takes it back to the middle, then all the way over to the right side. And he outruns them until uh, who's that? Adrian White. Adrian White. In. First and ten Eagles at midfield. Reverse coming. Take reverse. That's Tony. Tony to the 20. Kennard chasing. Out of bounds at about the six-yard line. Forty-four-yard pickup on the fake reverse. The Giants got that field goal, then they had a letdown. Two big plays by the Eagles. Big kickoff return. Put this offense, put this crowd back into the game. And then the big fake reverse and run to Tony. 44 yards, the longest run by an Eagle this season. Here it is. And you know, you start off here, you don't expect the Eagles to be much of a running team. You don't expect Tony to make the big run. A couple missed tackles by the Giants and a good run by Anthony Tony. Cunningham gets to Tony. He is down after a yard. Knocked backwards by Myron host of other Giants. You know, here's where it'll be interesting what play the Eagles call. I know what Randall Cunningham likes to do down here. He likes to go four wide receivers, spread the defense out, and then either throw the ball or find the lanes where he can run it. And I'm not sure that Ted Plum agrees with him. In fact, I don't think he does because he didn't give him the four wide receiver. That's how he scored the other Eagle touchdown, or the only Eagle touchdown. He's out of the lane. He gives to Byers. Byers. Chased by Cooks. Byers spins down to about the two. Eric Howard. Well, the fans are booing this one. They don't like it. I think everyone knows that the Giants inside the 20 are tough. I mean, scoring a TD, they're the toughest in the NFL. And I think running with the Philadelphia run offense is darn near impossible. And maybe Randall Cunningham is right, and he's getting it on this play. Now he has his four wide receiver. Now he has that defense spread. And if they give him lanes, he'll run it in. And the Giants send in Sheldon White. incomplete. And a flag on the play. Chris Carter, the intended receiver. Renee Thompson, the defender. And it's going to be pass interference against the Giants. And that'll give the Eagles first and goal at the one. Now they can put their regulars back in there. They went four wide receivers. You see the hole right there. See, he's just holding on to him. Renee Thompson, he's holding on before the ball gets there. And Carter didn't even get up before he was already protesting. Hey, so that's something. You know what Bill Parcells is thinking? A big kickoff return, a big run by Tony and some missed tackles, and now a third down pass interference. Those things will kill you. It's Byers and Tony behind Cunningham. Tony in motion. A handoff pitch back to Byers, and he won't get in. He got to about the half-yard line does have the ball. I think the Eagles will figure out here that they're either going to have to play pass it or run it in with Randall Cunningham. On a quarterback sneak. Yeah, quarterback sneak or even fake a trap and let him bootleg in. Byers is down. The man who carried the ball. 
neither one of these teams, the Giants or the Eagles, are very good at short yardage or goal line running. Some teams are and some teams just aren't. That's the fact of life. Watch Byers here. He gets hit. He makes a nice run, though, keeping that thing going. Then right at the end, you see him. He's trying to reach it over to break that play. I think what happened, it did break the plane. You see, he sneaked the ball in there, broke the plane. Broke something else, too. Yeah, and then I think the whistle had blown, though, before he did that. That was some run of fires uh, saving the, uh, the loss. His best day. Look at his first four games. Rushing 24 yards thus far today, 41. Brings up a second and goal situation at the one. 12.54 left to play. Byers still down. 11 carries. 41 yards for him today. He has been outstanding in the first four games for Philadelphia as a pass receiver for Buddy Ryan. Didn't it look like Buddy Ryan was saying pass? It looks like it. Just, I mean, that's the old signal for pass. Here's the play again of Byers. You can see the goal. There's not a lot of blocking down there, and there's a lot of giants come flying in there. It looked like number 70, Leonard Marshall, hit him right in the back. Right in the kidney area. Byers, of course, has had a history of foot problems ever since he was at Ohio State and came out of Ohio State. Bears coming back against Tampa Bay. They're in the fourth quarter now. And Minnesota and Green Bay both winning. Dallas and Detroit continue to lose. And Indianapolis, you see that? 30-7 yeah. over Buffalo. That was supposed to be a close one. And Jim Kelly has been carried out with a bad left shoulder. I still think down here, I still think you got to get the ball in there. You got to get to seven. And I think you have to get it with Randall Cunningham. A half yard they need. Higgs and Tony. Uh, Higgs, here you go. Pepper Johnson, number 52, knocked his shoe off. That is some hit. They, Higgs went to go flying. Lawrence Taylor catches him from the outside. Pepper Johnson is in there. They hit him so hard right here, they knock his shoe right off. He goes to jump. He jumps. The Giants jump. There's nothing. I still say they either have to throw it or let Randall Cunningham do it. They're not going to do it with these guys running behind those guys. Myers is back. And here's Cunningham. signal but the nearest official finally went up with the hands it was a struggle even when he finally scored it was tough I think that's what they had to do though because they can't run it in against that defense to throw it or let Randall Cunningham. In fact, the Steins are kind of fouled up. He trips coming out of here. He gets behind Ron Salter's guard, who was going to be a bootleg. I think he wanted to cut it in there. He couldn't. He gets it sprung out to the sideline, and he does get the ball over. And the official, after being helped by a fellow official, finally makes the indication touchdown. Well, you see, both feet are in. Now the ball goes over right there. It's in his left hand. All it has to do is break the plane, which is the front part. He did it before he did it the second time. See, as he goes down right now, that ball breaks the plane. Then he brings it back. Then he sticks it out again. They may be taking another look at that one. Well, if they don't know when the whistle blew, 
Then I think, see right there, now that ball's a touchdown. Now as he goes down, that's a touchdown. Right there. Now what they could say was, was his knee down or when did his knee go down? We had to look at this on the clicker. They just decided that it was a touchdown. Touchdown, indeed. Six plays to go 50 yards. 44 of them in one pop. The other six were extremely difficult. And it all started off with a big kickoff return. Extra point by Zendejas is good. 16-14. The Giants lead by two with 11 minutes and 49 seconds left to play. What good is an abundance of rich, soft leather in a luxury car if it doesn't have the stopping power of anti-lock brakes? What good is more legroom than the biggest Cadillac if your car doesn't have ultra-drive, the world's most advanced transmission? And how satisfying is elegant styling without Crystal Key, a better warranty than Rolls or Mercedes. The all-new Chrysler Fifth Avenue. There is no luxury without engineering. Attention football fans. Get a free NFL warm-up jacket when you buy 10 rolls of Think Insulation R19 or higher from, you know who, but hurry. Offer ends October 15th. We used to have a chair, and my father used to come up from work every night, and he used to sit in this one chair, and all the change from his pockets would empty out into the chair. We would all go flying for that chair, and we'd really? get take all the change and say, I did it for years. How many people ever broke their neck falling backwards in a How chair, honestly? How many people broke their kids' necks? <laughs> <laughs> if, if you fall out of a tree and break your neck, I'm going to kill you. That's a good one. That's a good one. Levi's 100 percent cotton dockers. If you're not wearing dockers, you're just wearing pants. In or out, in or out. In or out. That was a big one. My mother used to say that all the time. Oh. You're stay in, you're gonna Because she was going to let, let the air conditioning out. Yeah. <laughs> This NFL game summary is sponsored by Levi's 100% Cotton Dockers. If you're not wearing Dockers, you're just wearing pants. To summarize what's happened so far, the Giants have had two pass interference penalties that led to the two eagle touchdown, both by Cunningham. And fake field goals have been a very important ingredient in this contest. And I still think it's the type of game that is going to be won by one or the other of the quarterbacks. It's not going to be won by the running game, as we've no. seen. The defense really has control, the defense on both sides. And I think whichever quarterback, whether it's Phil Simms or it's Randall Cunningham, plays from now on, is going to win the game. 16-14, plenty of time left. 11-43, the Giants' lead is two points. Their record is 4-0 coming in. Eagles two and two. The situation, because it's early in the year, not desperate if the Eagles lose, but certainly they'd have a difficult task to catch the division leading Giants. That's going to be Maggot at the six yard line. Hit backwards by Jesse Small. that excited about a tackle hey well you're a linebacker you're a top draft choice they they sign you to do stuff like that guys are getting more excited about stuff they're supposed to do than they've ever been before I mean, that's a good hit i mean that's that's helmet to helmet that uh, puts him right on his back but i still think that's what you're supposed to do that's a first down giants at their own 25 and sims is going to throw it after a gain of 17. And he's been quiet today, Mark Cavarro. I think that's the second pass he's caught. You know that Buddy Ryan was worried about that before the game. And uh, the pass coverage has been pretty good. But uh, they have always had success with him. When you rush as many as they rush, it figures you'll be able to get something to the tight end. First down, Giants. Their own 42. only a yard. Mike Golick, number 90 on the bottom of the pile, made the first contact. Oh, 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 oh. Ex 
Cleveland Brown. Second down and eight. Giant ball, the room 45, leading by two. Megan is put out wide to the left. Out there alone with Eric Allen. Midfield. For another NFL update, let's send you again back to our New York studio and Brent Musburger. Pat, we could have the big upset brewing in Tampa now. Nine minutes to go, and the Buccaneers have busted in another one. A great run by Tate with some slick blocking, 16 yards, and it's 35-21, nine minutes to go. Back to Pat and John. So we could lose one of the undefeated teams. The other being the Rams. They play later today. The Giants 4-0. The Bears are 4-0 going to Tampa, third and two. hit by Eric Allen and maybe when he whirled over the head of the tackler he got enough to get the first down well the Eagles were in five defensive linemen on that one Pat they really had everyone up there Eric Allen watch him here's one two three four five they're here to stop it then they got all this and here's the guy here who makes the tackle but they have everything plugged up in the front Watch him. That's pretty good blocking, though, by the Giants. And the one guy that can't get is the corner, Eric Allen. Eric Allen didn't get Megan in time either. They that is tough to run against, though. You just can't block them all. You don't have enough people. First down, Giants. Next, the doubleheader game, game two here on CBS. 49ers against New Orleans. That's the game that was supposed to be at Candlestick, but because of baseball, switched to New Orleans. The other two coming as well. Three tight ends for the Giants. All on the same side. This is Megan, the low setback. He goes out of bounds at Eagle territory. Andre picked up four. Andre Waters shoved him out. You see big Jerome Brown. He was in that backfield. He got penetration again. And just missed Megan. And as he gets out of bounds here, he runs into a, into a couple Eagles on the sideline and knock him back where he came from. I think Jerome Brown, I think, is playing the best game I've ever seen him play. More active, I think. Yeah, I mean, he's all over the place, and he's shooting that gap right now, and he's he's causing a lot of problems for the Giants' running game. Second and six. Sims is back to throw it. Time to revolve. And he'll get another giant first down. Seth Joyner made the stop, a gain of nine. Well, Bavaro hadn't been doing much early. Now they're getting back to him. You see Seth Joyner on that play after the play. He hit Bavaro in the helmet. Bavaro didn't even feel it. <laughs> Look, a guy who goes out there and is numb. Guy whaps him in the head. He didn't even flinch. You it's said like he, having a fly up there. You said he's been quiet all day. He's always quiet, except when they throw him the ball. What he likes to do is catch that ball and then run over a bunch of them, like the bowling ball. First and ten at the Eagle 34. Sims gives it back to Anderson. Anderson out of bounds by Wes Hopkins. What another game. Enough for a first down. 10 for Anderson, his longest gain of the day. Well, I think one thing the Giants have learned is you can't get much running inside against this group. The way to do it is you pin them in and then get to the outside. They're at the Eagle 24. And there's nothing that makes a head coach feel better than your running game finally getting going. Well, you not only burn up that clock, think you've beaten them physically as well. Cross. Give this to Anderson. Flag on the play. And if it's holding, that would take him just about out of field goal range. Waters on the tackle. Motion. And the illegal 
motion penalty would take them out too, but it's only first down, so they got they got plenty more chances the Giants do. 72, the right tackle was uncovered. First down. Illegal formation. Well, that's not 72's fault. That's Doug Riesenberg. That means that the split end on the weak side wasn't on the line of scrimmage. So what that does is that makes the tackle eligible, and that's illegal. So it's not Doug Riesenberg. It's the split end on that right side wasn't up on the line. By the way, Buffalo quarterback Jim Kelly I said he had an injured shoulder. He has a separated shoulder. He'll be out perhaps for four weeks, first and 15 here. To Favaro, tried to make the one-hand catch covered by Seth Joyner. Couldn't come up with it. Sims couldn't get much on the throw because he was going down backwards. Well, it's that same thing. It's the one where they put Reggie White over the center, and they give you that overload there in the middle. You see, they got this thing going right here this big overload here, and then they just give you that pressure right now in the quarterback's face. You see Sims takes the ball back, and look at the pressure he gets. Now he goes to step up. He has no place to step. And you can't get much on the throw if you can't step up. Every Nin time he steps, he gets a headache. 19 hurries he's had today. Odessa Turner, split wide left. Sims back to throw it. This time he has time, and he gets it. Khalil Roussan, who's down to the 10. And a giant first down, tripped up by Waters, a gain of 17. As you said, Pat, here he gets the pass protection. They have Reggie White over the middle again. Now Bart Oates gets him. He gets good help in there from the guards. They keep that middle solid. Watch the difference here. Watch the middle here. Boom, boom, they're passing off. The tackle, Riesenberg comes down. They get that whole thing off there and let Sims step forward and hit Rasan. First down at the 11. That's Megan. And he cuts down to about the 7. Jerome Brown stopped him after a gain of 4. Seth Joyner with an assist. You know, a guy that's done a good job in this giant offensive line today is Doug Riesenberg. Because he's a right tackle, and he's been doing a good job against Reggie White when Reggie White lines up at the end there. Any success they've had running has been into that right side behind Riesenberg. That's a long day's work when you get out there and you got this guy across from you all day, and you got to try and run at him and then pass protect him. He's another one of those guys who doesn't say much, just gets it done. Anderson and Carthon behind Sims. looking for Odessa Turner. Bring up a third down and six. At the seven. Tampa Bay has gone in front of the Bears 42 to 21 now. So there were three undefeated teams yeah. going in today. The Bears, these Giants, and the L.A. Rams. The Blitz. Moat incomplete. Eric Allen on the coverage. And Byron Evans was right in there on, on Phil Sims. Again, with a Buddy Ryan team, I'll guarantee you, you're inside the 20, you're third down, you're going to get a blitz. You have successful pass protection, you're going to get a blitz. Watch 56 come straight up the middle, tries to get picked up there, and he's able to take on the block with one shoulder and put his hand up for Sims on the other shoulder. Allegra with Hostetler holding, 25 yards. good 19 14 Giants lead 5 59 left to play fourth quarter pure genuine never heat pass 
pasteurized. A beer that's made unlike any other. Cold filtered to give you the rich, smooth taste of real draft beer. That's the mark of a great beer. So tap into the cold, cold filtered Miller Genuine Draft. Plus system and Gillette Foamy Shave Cream together, the best a man can get. They call the man Montana. Mighty Joe triple charges the Niners against the Six, a Superdome shootout today. From above, the Goodyear Blimp America, based in Houston. Today by Mark Kynette from the Woodlands, Texas, right over Veterans Stadium. Don't forget the doubleheader games coming up: Saints, the 49ers, and the other unbeaten team now, the Rams against Atlanta. This is Higgs to about the 18. Adrian White down to make the tackle. Cunningham and the Eagle offensive unit have 82 yards to go to get it into the end zone. Giants 19, Eagles 14. That's there. why that field goal, that last field goal was so big because, as you say, now they have to get it in the end zone. Now it's not a field goal anymore. 5.51 remain. This is Tony. Tony to about the 24. Again, for an NFL update, let's send you back to our studio in New York and Brent Musburg. Pat, six minutes to go in Tampa. This is going to be the upset of the day. The Buccaneers are going to shock the Chicago Bears. Most points the Bear defense has given up since 81, and the Vikings can pull to within a game of first in the NFC Central. Back to Pat. 19-14 Giants here in Philadelphia. The Eagles have the ball at their own 24. Cunningham. Gets Carter and receivers right together. Mike Quick was right there by him. Carter makes a nice move here on the out. I'll tell you, Anthony Tony did a good job of blocking Lawrence Taylor. That didn't look like a good pass pattern because they have Chris Carter and Mike Quick right in the same area. But I'll tell you what made that is Randall Cunningham rolled left and Anthony Tony came out and knocked Lawrence Taylor down. You know, we got five minutes, 11 seconds to go. That's his first completion this half. Eight out of 20. This time, the same move to the right. He hung on. Stopped by Kennard. 21-yard gain. Mike Quick playing injured knees getting up slowly and that's the first pass that Mike Quick has caught today he started last week against the Bears on Monday night had to come out of that game and then didn't know if he could play today wanted to go as far as he could and maybe has been mostly a decoy today To the left and Cunningham back to throw it. Intended for Giles behind him. Lawrence Taylor with the heat on Cunningham. 
Are you talking about a guy, Jimmy Giles? He's been everywhere. He's been a starter and he's been a backup, and now he's a starter again, a 13-year veteran. We'll watch Lawrence Taylor putting the power, the, the pressure on Cunningham. I'll tell you, the guy that has risen to the occasion is Anthony Tony. He did a good this job second there. Half, he is really blocked. Second down, Cunningham back to throw it. Away from Banks. Away from Taylor. But not away from Mark Collins. Picked up two. The poor old Carl Banks. Carl Banks and uh, uh, Cunningham. You know, people asked Banks if you'd watch that film, you know, where Cunningham comes out and steps through and they call it the great escape. Banks says, I don't have to watch it. It's on every highlight film in America. <laughs> here he chases him here and misses him again. Watch him. I think Carl Banks has thrown more air balls than Randall Cunningham than anyone. Third and eight. at the 15. Sheldon White. That may be a throw that only Randall Cunningham and John Elway could make. It's that old thing when you go, now watch him, he's going to come back here in the shotgun, then he's going to go to his right. He's going to be flushed out, going to go to his right, look to his right, and then come back and stepping forward, throw that ball all the way across to the left sideline. There's an amazing guy, too, Garrity. He just seems to pop up out of nowhere and make the big play. He's always open. I think that guy was born open. Reverse fake again. It's Tony again. Tony inside the 10 out of bounds at about the 8. Guyton knocked him out of bounds. They're summoning trainers. The referee is hurt, I think. One of the officials. They're working on Carl Banks over here. Watch 58. He looks like he thinks he's going out of bounds. He just gets knocked out of bounds, and he cuts back. They are going to work on that side of the giant defense, as they said they were going to before the game. One of the officials down. It's either Dwayne Gandy or Jim Quirk. Blockers rolled into his knee. 19-14, Giants. Working to be the best they can be. Teammates sponsored by the U.S. Army. Hall of Famer Y.A. Tittle was one of the finest passers of his day. Wide receiver R.C. Owens, one of the game's great natural athletes. Together, they saved many a game with a prayer of a pass and a honey of a catch. Although opponents knew it was coming, the arm of Tittle and the leaping ability of Owens made the play work. As teammates, their individual talents created the alley-oop pass and made Tittle and Owens the best they can be. Most of my friends don't know what they're going to do after graduation, but I've already locked in guaranteed skill training in the Army. Qualify now and you can reserve even the Army's most sought-after technical training up to 12 months in advance through the Army's delayed entry program. Sure, being a soldier won't be easy, but then nothing worth having ever is. Murder aboard the Queen Mary made all the passengers wary. A cruise costing plenty of cash stopped being fun with a splash. As Jessica recalls wistfully... An enigma shrouded in mystery. Murder, she wrote. Then, the Mystic Pizza Guarantee. You'll laugh. Mr. Loaf's left his teeth again. You'll find romance. Oh, he is cute. Yeah, acting like white bread. You'll feel good all over. <laughs> For an absolutely guaranteed good time, watch the network television premiere. Mystic Pizza, tonight. 20 left to play. The Giants lead 19-14. But the Eagles have it. Second and four. The Giant nine. When this drive started, you said the Eagles have 80 yards to drive, and it sounded so hard. 
and they've got a big part of it in short time. Well, this is a tough part of the field to move against the Giants. Nope, out. Quick. Out of the end zone, covered by Kennard. How he got rid of that one, I have no idea. Leonard Marshall was bearing down on him, and how that ball even got out of there, I don't know, but watch you play. Watch Marshall coming right there, right in front of him, and he again, he couldn't step forward. He had to twist and turn and just throw that ball up. And Quick is out of the end zone. Controversial fall on the Redskin game where he's out of the end zone. They gave him a touchdown. Yep. Here goes Cunningham. He'll have a first down at about the two. Eric Howard made the stop, but he got eight yards. It'll be first and goal. Eagle. Again, he likes the four wide receivers down here. Spread out the defense. There's nothing to pass. You know you're always going to have this. You get a lane, you give that pump fake, and you know the first guy there is a nose tackle. But again, he got by Carl Banks. Again, he put the ball up there. Boom, Carl Banks jumps up. You never leave your feet. It makes it first and goal from the two-yard line. And Cunningham wants a timeout with 2.25 left to play. In the ball game, the Giants lead by five, but the Eagles are at the door. And I think Randall Cunningham wants to come over here and talk Ted Plum into something. Again, I don't think he wants that tight formation. That's Ted Plum right there. I don't think he wants that goal line offense. Because I think, again, like the last score they got, if they're going to get a score, I think Randall Cunningham's going to have to handle the ball. He wants them spread out instead of bunched together. And that's how he got his last score by running. That's how he got that big play there, the big first down, spread him out, and then if they give him any kind of lane, he can run it in. Well, of course, he just signed a huge contract. And if there's ever been a guy worth that kind of money, if any of us are, anybody is, it would be Randall Cunningham, because it's on his shoulders and he's carrying it.
almost off the end. of rich, soft leather in a luxury car if you don't have the stopping power of anti-lock brakes. The all-new Chrysler Fifth Avenue. There is no luxury without engineering. Crispy golden fries. America's meat and potatoes. Come home. That's McDonald's. Oh, what good is more legroom than the biggest Cadillac if you don't have Ultra Drive, the world's most advanced transmission? The all new Chrysler Fifth Avenue. There is no luxury without engineering. But here's an interesting coverage. The Giants have three receivers here. This is the one they're going to go to. The Eagles are covering off here. Here's the coverage here. So he is going to cover him on the end, and he picks her off right there. But they're going inside, outside. See the second guy in? Now, right there, he comes in. Now, Sims hits Ingram and Frizzell at the same time, and Frizzell comes up with it. But that was an interesting coverage, three on three, but they played him inside out. Two minutes remaining. Gets his back to Higgs. Higgs scrambles down to the 20. Tripped up by Kennard. The Giants have all of their timeouts remaining. Well, the one thing they know now, they have to stop the run, and they got to get up there and tackle the ball. See, they have to get up there and try and get the ball out of their hands. And as a result, no one tackles a ball carrier. That is poor and sloppy tackling. And the Giants used one of their three timeouts. Two left. Eight-yard pickup will make it second and two with a minute 42 left. Now the Eagles are playing without Keith Jackson. They're all pro tight end. But Jimmy Giles has done a good job of blocking over there. They have run that right side behind Jimmy Giles, Ron Heller, Ron Salt, 
and they have done a good job on this giant defense. Giles has always been a good athlete. He's a heck of a baseball player. You know, Buddy Ryan said the reason he picked him up is he had so much trouble with him when he was at Tampa Bay, and Buddy was with the uh, Chicago Bears. Second down and two. At the Giant 19, the Eagles lead it 21-19. Hand off is to Tony. Close to first down yardage, and the Giants will have to take another timeout. Yeah, I would think if I were looking for someone on this offense, it would be Anthony Tony today. Because it's not only, like I said, it's not only the things we've seen and the things you'll see in statistics, but again, there's a blocking that he's done for Randall Cunningham on Lawrence Taylor. There's the runs, there's the other blocks he's made. I tell you, he looks like uh, that helmet's been in a game today. Philadelphia's yeah. offense today has gotten 157 yards rushing. Well, and these guys take a lot of abuse, too, and, you know, the, the running backs, the running game, and I think Randall Cunningham gets a lot of credit, like he deserves, but when these guys come up with a game and they play like they did today, I think they deserve the credit, too. But some poor old right tackle, you know, they don't, you know, Heller, they don't give anything soft, they don't give Jimmy Giles, David Little in there blocking, third and about a half yard have one more timeout. Cunningham got the first down. That should do it. He runs for two. Well, that'll do it. That'll mean coming up this afternoon that bottom team, the Rams, are the only undefeated team. There were three of them coming in today, the Giants and the Bears. The Bears get upset by Tampa. We got this game here, and now this afternoon, after this game, later today, there's only going to be one undefeated team. It's the L.A. Rams. No one, including me, and I'm sure you, could understand why the Eagles were three-point favorites in this game. Uh, I thought the Giants were a better team and playing better at this time. Not much he can do now. begins with 60 minutes he was a defense contractor who cheated on the testing of a vital piece of military hardware where did we find him in jail at 60 minutes tonight which is followed by murder she wrote and the cbs sunday movie mystic pizza that's all tonight on cbs For John Madden and Pat Summerall saying so long from Philadelphia, where the final score was the Eagles 21, the Giants 19. Stay tuned for the second game of our NFL doubleheader. Most of you will see the world champion San Francisco 49ers.